his sister. Oh, Lord. <laughs> All right, we are live now, fellas. What's going on? Hey, hey what's going no, on? Good no to be here. Black cotton. Black, Black cotton. cotton. Black <laughs> cotton. For those who are watching, we are here with the two creators of the comic book Black Cotton that has been all the rage. Here's one of my issue number ones. Here's the other. <laughs> got that one. I've got this oh, one. Man. I had to, I had to fight. I had to fight a few people for that. <laughs> and I've got the tinfoil cover, but I'm not going to take it out of the out of the plastic right now because it hasn't been touched by human hands by me. So it's just going to stay in here the way it is. That one is uh, beautiful. Now, when last we were here, we talked about Black Cotton number one, but since then, we've now had Black Cotton number two. <laughs> Right, so we're here to figure out, chop it up, and figure out what's going on. Black cotton number two, especially well, right. the limited edition one. I didn't get but that yeah. one. I didn't see that one. I'm not yeah, my LCS. I said, look, fellas, I'm not fighting with with a bunch of people over getting these damn issues. So put me <laughs> on the pull list, and if there's variants, stick the damn variants inside my pull box. I'm not fighting. I'm not throwing elbows to get these black cotton issues. <laughs> <laughs> that's how that's how I was able to get this. I just walked in the store. He's like, Paul, I got you, man. I was like, <laughs> Hey Paul, did you share this to uh Black Superheroes Forever? Uh not yet. Herschel should be handling that. Because I, I didn't see it pop up. Um All right. well you go ahead and start talking. I'll work on the logistics of that stuff. Right, 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 right. Because we All got right. questions. Hold on a second. So basically, as I said a moment ago, we're here with the two creators of Black Cotton. Introduce with, yourselves, fellas. With Patrick Foreman and Brian Hawkins. Patrick, go ahead and say hey. Hey, what's up? And Brian Hawkins, go ahead and say hey. Hey, 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 what's up, what's up? Now, now hey, here's dude. the thing. A couple of months ago, well, a month and a half or so ago, after uh, Black Cotton number one dropped, we talked, me and Patrick talked for roughly about two hours yeah. about his background, about issue number one or whatever. So today, I want to go ahead and start with Brian and get some information about you, get into your biography. So why don't you tell the people, you know, who you are, age, you know, married, all that type of stuff and how you got <laughs> into comic books. Hold on, right, hold on. Cool. And, and, and how many comic books he had come out in just February alone? <laughs> okay. Come on, man. Come on, man. Um, yeah, so I'm Brian Hawkins, um, uh, happily married, three kids, um, went to undergrad in Richmond, Virginia, VCU, go Rams, um, majored in English, uh, I, I taught English, um, for 17 years, so oh, wow. I'm, I'm, I'm 42, um, so, you know, I came up in that 80s, 90s where, you know, uh, comics and cartoons and movies and horror slasher flicks all that was great uh the 80s and 90s um so um i did a little bit of, well i've always been an aspiring writer uh when i you know when i got out of undergrad you know i shopped screenplays around spec scripts and stuff like that and uh ended up starting um my own theater group my own theater company um, and we did about three plays, uh, which I wrote, produced, directed. I even wrote some music, believe it or not. Um, I, the Chibata uh, boys will be happy to hear about that. Huh, who? The, uh, we have these brothers on, on this, the do a podcast called Paperbacks and Soundtracks. Kay and Amir. Kay uh -huh. just checked in and said he's in the house, so. Oh, nice. What's up? Yeah. So, you know, I mean. I'm crazy rusty right now on the guitar. I, I self-taught uh, for about like a year and a half and then I was able to kind of just put some music together for a few plays. Um, and then, you know, um, you know, earlier on when I was you know in my childhood, big, like big comic book guy, trading cards, action figures, cartoons. Um, around high school, you know, kind of petered off a little bit. Um, uh, and so I really was able to get back into it once, um, I got out of undergrad and, uh, it was really cool because, you know, you know, that, that independence of, of, of college being on your own, you discovering, like beginning to at least discover who you are, 
Um, and then, you know, I feel like that kind of crystallizes to a degree, to a certain level when you get out of school. And I was, you know, back into like me, like who, like who I am. And, you know, I got to be able to go back, dive back in, into comic books and those things that um, I loved as a child, but now as an adult. So like, like this full circle thing. Right. And, um, and so from there, you know, because I was doing the writing and aspiring to write, um, you know, I'm like, hmm, I wonder if I could write a comic. And so I just began to research and right. look into like how do you write 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 comics, um, and which is kind of similar to playwriting. It's kind of similar to um, to, to to spec scripts to screenplays. Uh, and so you know I dove into that and self published some and just continued to work. The, like I guess you could say work my way up, but it was more just trying to create, trying to write. Um, right. Then I got into freelancing uh, and from freelancing, um, putting more work out and having a bunch of failures and ups and downs and not failures, learning experiences. And, yeah. Right. Absolutely. And, and that's what those are. You know, those things where you don't always win is very important and people uh, should not be afraid to lose, not right. win. It's right. OK not to win. That's um, what's up. Mm -hmm. So, so how you met Patrick. Patrick, so teaching. Um, so I'm in DC, uh, I taught in DC for five years. And so we have a mutual friend, uh, Luke Wright, who is an author, um, a motivator speaker himself. And Luke had read like, you know, some of my self, my self published stuff, some of my freelance stuff. And he was like, hey, man, like, I have a, a friend who is like, he's a comic book collector and he's, he's, you know, he wants to link up, you know, because he has this idea. And I'm like, yeah, oh, all right, all right. And so, you know, it kind of worked out where January, January 2020, you know. And, um, oh, that's we, it, that, yeah, yeah. Like it was like, it can't, man, like it was the end of my last year in DC, or maybe like a couple months like after that, we, we, we linked up and we had lunch. And we're sitting there and, you know, we're just chopping up, chatting, whatever. And finally, you know, we kind of got to <laughs> like, like the main course, which was actually, you know, the comic book. And so Patrick was like, yeah, man, so, so look, I had this idea, like this concept, right? For a, like, like a world where everything is reversed. Even the cotton is black. I said, stop, whoa, whoa. <laughs> that's it black cotton and from that point on like we 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 haven't separated since then like we spent the next two hours there talking about how to bring that idea black cotton to life creating the, like like fleshing out the concept fleshing out the characters we went back to patrick's house and just started building on all of it like how that world was going to come to life you know what right. avenue to take what vehicles to take what characters use, who would they be, um, what, what this world will look like. Um, and, it's, it, it, and that started in January, 2020. And I guess what, like March, April of 2020, uh, we were beginning like, like the art. Yeah. Um, we just, you know, the foot was on a pedal and we just did not let up. It was just, um, I mean, for lack of a better word, I had to say it's like a calling. Right. So. so so in the midst of all the chaos of 2020 arose mm -hmm. creation yeah 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 the pandemic you know and i'm i'm very sensitive to you know you know horrible time like you know it's no one wishes something like that upon humanity um but you know we go through those things like if you look at our history you know it's a part of our our, our species history and so what's 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 interesting is that you know during this time where we're forced to slow down, where a lot of sorrow and tragedy happens, um, you also find that light, you know, with darkness, there comes light. And, you know, and, and we were a part of um, that speck of light where, you know, we were able to create something special, what, what we believe to be something special. Um, so from- I can say that it is special. 
I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. For oh, sure. Yeah. Thank so, you. So Patrick, let me ask you this. What was the genesis for you of Black Cotton? Where did this come from? I think it comes from, and I think a, a, a lot of people of color can relate to this. When I say this, I think it comes from us uh, uh, experiencing life as a person of color. Uh, something that me and my wife sort of talk about, uh, even we talked about it today. There's a show called uh, The Underground Railroad. And she was telling me, she was like, it's a good show and everything. And I was like, I don't doubt that it's a good show. Right. But my issue is this. I'm tired of seeing Black people as slaves. I'm tired of seeing Black people running away and people chasing them. Trauma you know? porn. Yeah. I, and, and I said, you know, mainstream Hollywood just don't get the, they don't get that point that, you know what, we're tired of it. Right. How, how, how much more do we need to see that? Right. There you are know? other aspects of us as Black people besides being enslaved, being hunted, and things of that nature. You're absolutely correct. Right. You know, so, shows like this for me personally, mm -hmm. I won't watch them anymore. Right, I, I can't watch it while I'm gone, so it will get the numbers because we need our programs to get to do well. But right. I, I can't sit up here and watch any more black trauma porn. I absolutely get you. Right. So, so basically, that's where it really birthed. It, it, it just, I've had the concept for a long time, and you know how uh, I'm a spiritual person. You know, I, I'll say that. You know, sometimes it's all in uh, God's timing. And I believe that uh, God's timing was like, hey, okay, I retired in 2018. Me and Luke was going, talking in uh, prisons, you know, I'm mentoring people. And then it was like, it's time. But I don't know how to do this. Right. And look at, look at you know, how the dominoes fell. January, me and Brian link up. We right. go, you know, and, and Brian, hands, hands, I, you know, he always, uh, I always say, you know, I give much praise and kudo to Brian because the knowledge that he had, he didn't have to share it with me. Right. But he did. And I am 20 times, you know, uh, folds better from the day we met, you know, to now. I mean, we're doing phenomenal things right, uh, right now, but. Timing was everything. We meet and then COVID happened. And guess what? Now he also gave us the time right. to okay. really devote and Brian really could pour into me. So it, it's all about timing. And, and, and what I would say is this, that is going to be the number one question, especially next year, the year after, even going five years from now, the question is going to be, what did you do with the time that was given to you during this COVID, you know? Because a lot of people got time. Yeah. How did you, how did you address it? How did you deal with it? How right. did you overcome it? Yeah. So, so, um, so really that's where it really birthed and uh, it, it, it sprung from there because I said, we need to flip the script so that people can walk in other people's shoes and develop empathy because if they actually had empathy for us then we wouldn't be co constantly seeing these right. slavery pictures you know from them just like how my wife told me the underground started off with a freaking brutal beating uh, of, of a black person being whipped you know right. it's like i i gotta start off like that right right where's the empathy so oh uh, that's that's really to the core what black kind is meant to do. It's meant to give people that shock of reality of walking in somebody else's shoes. Right. So that guess what? When you approach me later, you approach me with respect. And right. I do the same to you, you know? But yeah, so that's where right. it came from. <laughs> so so right. I, I get a little passionate with it. Well, I see. Black kind. <laughs> Cotton, so, Brian, tell me, who, what is black cotton? Now, see, I know obviously because I have the issue, but for those people who may not, 
tell us what is Black Cotton about and who is involved in the comic book, who is in Black Cotton. All right, so, you know, it's set in alternate reality, right, um, where the social order of white and black is reversed, and it hinges upon um, a elitist family, 1% family, um, billionaire family, the Cottons, um, and their struggle with handling uh, their police officer's son, who's kind of like the quote-unquote black sheep, well, I guess it would kind of be white sheep of the family, right? <laughs> be white sheep of the family, white sheep of the family, um, Zion, who has uh, decided to uh, become a police officer. And so he's involved in an officer involved shooting of a minority white woman. Uh, and so uh, issues one through six uh, really centers around, you know, the family dealing with uh, that circumstance, that issue and Zion and the social climate that surrounds that. Who's in the family? Tell us who the family is. All right, so we have Elijah Cotton, who's the patriarch. We have Jaleesa Cotton, who's the matriarch. Um, you know, they're like early 50s billionaires. Um, you, you have the oldest son, who is Zion Cotton, who is, again, the white sheep, black sheep of the family. Uh, he's a police officer. Mm -hmm. uh, you have Kia Cotton, who is the middle child. Uh, she is the CCO of Black Cotton Ventures. Um, and, you know, as the story goes on, we'll go, in, go into more Layers will be peeled back about, you know, their business, et cetera, et cetera. Um, she's a CCO and she, she's, she's like her father's right hand. Um, and you have Xavier Cotton, who is the youngest, who's 16. He's a teenager. You already shaking your head at Xavier. Uh, <laughs> can't wait to talk about that. Can't wait to talk about that. Um, and, you know, he's a teenager and he's idealistic and, uh, you know, he's woke. Uh, he thinks he's woke at least. Uh, it, it might be arguable, but, <laughs> um, and uh, so he's in the high school setting. Um, so those are main five cotton characters, but you have the Nightingales, yeah. uh, who um, sorry, you the, have. Who did you say? The Nightingale. You, okay. you have the Nightingales, um, who is the family, um, the mother and father, uh, Robert and Rebecca, of Elizabeth Nightingale, who was the young white woman who was shot, the okay, white minority okay, okay. who was shot. So those are the main characters of, of, of Black Cotton, you know, one through six. The Cotton family, how old would you say everyone is? Okay, so Elijah Cotton, you know, is uh, Elijah and Jaleesa, early 50s. Um, we're looking at Zion, you know, being around like mid, mid 20s, maybe 26 or so. Um, you're looking at Kia, you know, she's like 23, 24-ish, and Xavier, who is like the baby in the family, he is 16. Right. How did the mother and father meet? Or is that is that going to be spo a spoiler? No, no, no. I mean, they, they, we can say that they go back, you know, they are a very stable couple. Um, we are going back to like, you know, early on, college-like. Um, there is some, we are going to touch on that some some more in volume two uh, with, with another storyline that's gonna go into volume two, but, uh, but Elijah and Jaleesa have been together for a while. They're, I'm not gonna say they are like them, but if you think of like uh, Lucius and Cookie, you kind of get, yeah. you can kind of look at them <laughs> like that, but- from Empire, uh, for those who don't know, those are two main characters from the now canceled Fox show Empire. Right. Yeah. I'm gonna do a little graphic here so you guys can see what they're talking about. Cool. <laughs> yeah, that great artwork by right there. yeah. It's uh, you got uh Jalissa, and and I'll tell you something special about that cover. Um, <laughs> there's a lot of special right, things about that cover. Shout cover. out to Marcello Santana, man. He's yeah. incredible. On that. Marcello ain't no joke. So uh, we want Regina King. We we we've been shouting out, <laughs> calling out Regina King. We sent in subliminal messages. We sent. <laughs> Uh, straight direct messages to uh, Regina King. So there's a picture of I Regina King on. dressed just like that, sitting just like that. So I have seen that picture. Yeah. I've seen that picture on the internet. <laughs> so so we trying to get her. We trying to you know, hey Regina, yeah. when you get done with bitter root. You know, come on over to Black Cotton. <laughs> yeah yeah. If, if if this was ever to be adapted into anything like I I love Regina King like that's it I just 
Yeah, like now you realize you're like, married, bro. My wife might have problems. Mm -hmm. I was just about to say, like I just said, you realize you're married, bro. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, uh, so do you? Speaking of, since you since you mentioned it, do you guys read Bitter Root? Yes, yes, I do. Thoughts on yes. it? Hmm? Thoughts about Bitter Root? I love Bitter Root. I mean, so I have um, the second volume in single issues on on pull um that my because because i miss seven eight and ten but he has 11 and 12 and i'm waiting for him to to get me the rest um for volume two but i've i've read volume one and uh it, i love volume one so i I'm, I'm not up on what happens volume two because i refuse uh to pick up <laughs> to take 11 and 12 until I get the rest. I'm the same uh, way. Like if I got missing <laughs> issues, nah, I gotta wait till I got the whole set. I, I, I have to. Happen. Yes, that's you, me. I'm I'm still on that first to. volume. Cause I gotta get it. <laughs> so Good has luck. anybody contacted you guys about any type of live action version of Black Cotton <laughs> that you can talk that. about? That you can talk about. We 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 would love to talk about it, but we can't speak on it. Gotcha. Good. Well, let me say this. <laughs> I'm a, you know, for those people who have been tuning in to us for the past two or three months, everybody knows that I'm a huge fan caster. I love fan casting comic books. You know what I'm saying? For those yeah. who don't know, when you fan cast a comic book, you take a comic book character and figure out who would you want to play that character live action. Okay. With that being said, for this, for this, for this comic book, uh -oh. I chose Sam Jackson as Elijah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Even though I know you guys want Regina King, I get that. I understand that. But I view this couple as an older couple, not 50s, but, you know, the husband being maybe in his late 60s, early 60s. 70s, yeah. and the mother being in her 60s or so, right? Okay. So I chose Angela Bassett as Jaleesa. She could and, definitely. So work. you would want Regina King for Jaleesa. I get it. I understand. <laughs> And Angela uh, Bassett uh, is good too. I'm not mad. I'm not mad at Angela. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Angela Bassett. I chose Damson Oops. Idris as Whoa. Zion. There we go. Who? For those who don't know, Damson Idris plays um uh what's his name on uh the drug dealer on Snowfall. Snowfall, yes. I know you're talking about. Okay. Yeah. Yes. And I chose um Dominique Fishback right. as Kia. Oh, all right. You know who Dominic Fishback is? The hate. I think I do. Yeah, yeah. She's yeah, the main I star. Of the hate. I got my iPad yeah. right here. I'm gonna look them all yeah. up. She, matter of fact, she the played hate. in Judas and the Black Messiah. She was Fred Hampton's girlfriend slash baby mama in Judas and the Black Messiah. Right, right. And, and I chose Niles Fitch as Xavier. Uh, so you put with that. <laughs> now Fitch is from uh Yeah, yeah, from uh, uh This Is Us. Yes. And yeah. I chose Nicole Beharry as uh, Elijah as Eli's assistant Carolina. Ooh. So what do you, so what do you guys think about that fan casting? Be honest. What do you think? Oh, oh, I like that. Sam, you know, Sam Sam Oh, Samuel Jackson, he can play in. Oh, yeah. <laughs> But Yo, Dominique really Fishback. Like Yo. Fishback. Yeah, I really like her. She's like, phenomenal. Yeah. 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 And now Angela Bassett, I mean, she is a beast. Period. She can act. She's got yeah. talent. Yeah. Yes. Talented. Um, with the announcement that Regina King is going to be uh, directing a Bitterroot movie, mm -hmm. I fan cast her in Bitterroot as well as, mm. um, as the daughter. I can't remember the daughter's name off the top of my head, but as one of the sangarees, the the daughter. What is her name? It starts with like an S, I think. It does. It does. Uh, is it? So, it's not Sonia. No, no, no. It's like it's a like a nickname, like Spark or something like that. I can't. Yeah, remember. I remember. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll look it up here in a second. But I, I fan cast her in that as well. But um, with all that being said, we we've give us a Brian, give us a breakdown of what issue number one was about. Then Patrick, tell us about issue number two. Gotcha. All right, so issue one, um, to sum it up, um, you know, we are introduced immediately, you know, to the shooting, the officer-involved shooting, um, which, you know, 
it was designed to to pull on our string some um, yeah. because of the the hallmark of the Trayvon Martin shooting and the the murder of him, um, you know, with the hood. And so it was meant to uh, reflect that. Um, for me personally, you know, you have moments in time that kind of just wake you, that kind of just jar you, that kind of just gives you this realization. And for me, that was one of them. Uh, mm -hmm. So, you know, when Patrick and I went into discussing where to start with this, um, we, we, with this story of the shooting, we thought that that was very important to, um, <clears throat> I want to use the word tribute, to pay tribute, but to, but I don't think tribute is the right word, but to honor, to, to really put that as a centerpiece. To recognize um, it. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Uh, and so you have um, Zion, and so we find out that Zion Cotton um, <clears throat> is the, is the officer involved and then we learn more about his family and who his family is. And so we're thrown into this world where, you know, uh, the social order of white and black is reversed. And so Zion, even though he's, he's a, a beat cop is, is very wealthy. Um, and then that, and so you have the layers of who his family is, you have him um, being a public servant and so you didn't have the ramifications of that. And from the ramifications of him being part of a 1% family, but being a public servant, uh, you know, you have the social climate in that town, in that city that heats up. And so you get the idea that, you know, we're in a world that is uh, reversed as an alternate reality, but there are a lot of similarities between that world and our own. And so the rest of issue one um, deals with the aftermath the, the initial aftermath of the shooting and how the cottons are gonna spin it, how the cottons are gonna handle it because of who they are, uh, because of, of their uh, because of their power, because of their oh, status. Wow. Um, and, and so um, we immediately get into the idea of, while it's a story of, of you know, race, race reverse, it's, it's also, and even more so, a story of social order reversed and the haves versus the have nots and who they are. So this um, would be the equivalent of Jeff Bezos having a son who was a cop, basically. Absolutely. Every, and everybody yeah. knows that that's Jeff Bezos' son right. who's a big cop who ends up shooting somebody and the ramifications of that. Now, the Absolutely. question that I have, though, is do you go into how this world is quote unquote reversed from our world. Yes, so what Patrick and I have decided um, is like, we'll, you'll get pieces throughout the story to help understand that. You'll even get a, a huge piece, um, and I'll say so like in issue five, um, with part, you know, within the storyline of issue five, you're really coming to understand like, oh snap, that's how it is. But you know, we've discussed extensively and talked about um, like how this world uh, is, is shaped and how it works. And one of the, the major misconceptions, and it's kind of natural for us to go there. And someone actually asked this question, was like, you know, well, well okay, well, well, where did it all change? Right, uh, exactly. and, <laughs> I don't know if that was, so, I wanted to ask you that question, but I was afraid it might be a spoiler. No, 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 oh, no, it's, no. It's, no it's fine because, um, you know, it, there was never actually like a point where it changed. So what we're dealing with is a uh, a universe where there was never uh, slavery. Like blacks didn't have white slaves. What happened was there was African immigration instead of European immigration. Mm. Uh, and so, so African immigration occurred first uh, with some other people of color who partnered with them. And so they came to the Americas first. And so and what we're dealing with is a... Um, and an upheaval, uh, upending of, you know, of of how oppression and suppression and racism and all these these ills that we have, how they can come about even without slavery. Because right now in this world, like we don't have slavery, but we still have the same root problems. Right. The same root problems come down to there's a human condition problem. 
right. that exists. And so we're so we're attempting to address the human condition problem um, without using the uh, the stigma of rate of the, the of, of backdrop slavery. of the slavery. Right. Exactly, because that's the first thing that people would say, like, oh no, white people slaves? No, right. no, they're not. No, they right. weren't actually. Huh. No. Now before we can still happen. Before we move on to Patrick and issue number two, Brian, I gotta ask you because me and Patrick had this conversation a couple of months ago. <laughs> After reading issue number one and reading it a couple of times, I am of the personal opinion that Eli and Carolina are getting it in. So, <laughs> I knew he was gonna ask that question. That's why I put you want me to confirm or deny. <laughs> I, I want to know, the people want to know, everybody wants to know, Eli and Carolina, what's up? Okay, so can I ask a counter question first? Sure, go ahead. All right. So what leads you to believe that that's taking place? Here's what's funny. Okay. There's a panel right here that, that I'm showing that, you. <laughs> Patrick asked me that exact same question. There was a scene. I remember. I remember. That has up. But Carolina is very familiar with him before she catches herself and mm -hmm. becomes more formal, right? <laughs> now, another thing, Eli is an older gentleman who is extremely wealthy, which leads me to believe he is an A-type personality. Mm -hmm. From a real world perspective, we know what those type of dudes are like. So <laughs> he and his wife have been together for over 20 years, right? So, I mean, come on. Let, let, let's be real. All right. We know from a real world perspective, rich, powerful man who's been with the same woman for over 25 years. Oh, Lord. Here we go. He's he, come on. I mean, come on. No, no I, 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 I got I to gotta put a disclaimer here that, that Mark is very much anti marriage. And yes, Paul, we know that you're married and you love your wife and you're not going to cheat on your wife. Yes, we get it. We're not talking about you right now. We're talking about this comic book. So, so <laughs> The question remains. Okay. What's up? All right. So the the way I have to go with this is that I think that you'll get more of an answer in issue six. Than there ain't what. no damn answer. <laughs> That's very <laughs> much the answer. The answer is read the book. Read the book. Uh, <laughs> hey, look, look, no, I'm in agreement with everything that you said, and I will admit that. That does, and even the dialogue and how it leaves off like that does make it appear that way. But the, but the question is, did we do that on purpose, though? Well, uh, did you? <laughs> to make it look like something that is not, or is it to look like something that's not, but it is, but it's really not? Okay, let's see. You just, just you're with trying you. to pull a Jedi mind trick. <laughs> that, was a literal, that was a literal Jedi mind trick right we're, there. We're going to move on to passive situation. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let, let, me, let me ask a question. Let me, let me. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. With Brian. So, Brian, I know you said that there wasn't any particular point where everything got flipped. So, mm -hmm. you have a world where African migration took place, and that's how Black people came to America, mm -hmm. which, you know, is a very interesting concept to me. Some of this, because I love history and I love studying Absolutely. African history and African American history specifically. There was this book by this uh, professor. His name is Dr. Ivan Van Sertema called mm. They Came Before Columbus, in which he traces uh, archaeologically and socially and historically how indeed Africans did come to the New World before Columbus many years uh -huh. ago. Um, I, it reminds me of this storyline. We talk about the comic books. There's a storyline in a book from the 90s called New Warriors. And in this storyline, uh, this villain, so to speak, is a is a Egyptian sorceress goddess type person and she has a power over reality and she changes and alters reality so that Egypt is never conquered by Rome so consequently Egypt expands and takes over the world and and amongst that takeover is Egyptian so Egypt is like the center of the world the center of the power structure of the world and they actually do the same thing you're talking about, where the Egypt emigrates to the United States, and that becomes the 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 new you know New York is now New Assyria, you know stuff mm -hmm. like that. 
and they change the whole structure of the world and society of the world so that people they're not they're not they're not studying Christ, they're, they're not um following christianity they're following uh -huh. they're, uh -huh. instead of god or jesus they're following akhenaten and Ra. Yeah. you know uh -huh. and then the, the <laughs> buildings look like you know egyptian style buildings the clothing changes and they they've got these egyptian style of clothing but in a 20th century so to speak um and then people of color and black people are at the top of the food chain and the europeans who were the ones who were colonized by the egyptians are at the bottom of the food chain so when the avengers pop up on scene the avengers are all black and thor is a place with like horus you know <laughs> the, the god of you know the, the egyptian god horus instead of the god of thunder um captain america is replaced with captain assyria you know just all these all these changes and you've got all these black faces on avengers so i was wondering if, if you're ever going to get into if you have plans for looking at the societal changes um in terms of you know not just uh economic structures between what we traditionally know as black and white uh but also social structures such as religion such as mm -hmm. dialect how do people talk you know do the black people now speak like proper English and the white people speak like a broken abonics type English. I mean, are you going to get into how the world is different when slavery never existed and black people actually colonized the United States? You know, how does it, how do we relate to Native Americans? Are we, were we the suppress the, ag the aggressors and suppressors of the Native Americans when they, let you me, know? Let me take that, Brian, that piece right there. Right. <laughs> so I'm, I'm, I'm glad you, uh, you uh, asked that question. I'm, I'm just gonna take a Those are questions thing. that go through my mind as I'm reading your books. Yeah, and, and it's funny because as you were talking, I was like, man, he been, he been sitting in some of our meetings, you know? <laughs> <laughs> cause, cause me and Brian, we've been talking about that and we've actually been working that out. Like Brian uh, was uh, saying, we're, we're gonna be peeling the onion a lot, giving people more and more but you're spot on going straight. I wanted to address the uh, us and the Native Americans. Um, this is a big what if, yeah. you know? What if Africans came and instead of doing like uh, the Europeans did with the Native Americans, you know, taking from them and actually, you know, uh, uh, oppressing them, what if we actually bartered with them? What if we were friends and guess what? We all climbed together. So that's our, you know, uh, 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 connection with it. When we came over, we respected them. Right. And we understood, you know, hey, we can work together. So you don't have uh, the oppression of the Native Americans, which you will see uh, later on. You will see that when you see figures uh, in political and uh, all of our uh, uh, buildings and stuff, you will see that they also grew with us too. We just were better at bartering and actually, you know, uh, 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 establishing ourselves. Which because the Africans operation. didn't have that supremacy that Europeans have, because Correct. Europeans have gone throughout the throughout the world with their superiority that they are better than any other group out there, but the Africans in the black cotton world didn't have that mindset, is Correct. what you're saying. Correct. Not initially, absolutely. Not initially, no. no. Okay. Not right. initially. That's a loaded statement. Be before, yeah. before we go forward, before we <laughs> not go initially. forward, address some You're picking up on everything. You're picking up on everything. All right, Paul, check this out. I'm, can't I'm conquer. You can't You up. can't be in line unless you're willing to do some line shit. Right. <laughs> Paul, let's talk. I'm, I'm doing the comments on Black Comic Lords. Go into Black Comics forever and see whatever questions there are. But some of the questions from Black Comic Lords are, Richard Wright asks, who is the inspiration behind the cotton? Is there a specific group of people that gave you the inspiration for the cotton? Hmm. I can't. Uh, I can't. Not by name. Not by name, but, you know, they are, they are, they symbolize like the one percent. They symbolize, right. um, you know, that that elitist family. You know, the 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 day in society. That's what the cottons are. Gotcha. They are representative of the day. 
I think they 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 are representative of where we should be. Right. But if, for if, the supremacy. If we were, yeah. If we if we were given the opportunity uh that should have been afforded to us, we would be in that position right there i mean every every look at all of the major things that we were uh doing just like our, uh the black uh, uh stock market i mean think if that was able to thrive and just do what it was supposed to do yeah the wealth there's no telling edward watson asked did you take any inspiration from the black cotton did you take any inspiration for Black Cotton from the 1995 movie White Man's Burden? For those who don't know, that was a movie with Harry Belafonte Jr. and John Travolta, where in that world, the Black folks were uh, superior to the white folks who were, you know, the lower caste people. So the question is, did any of that movie play into your creation of Black Cotton? Honestly, I, I know for me, I haven't seen the movie. I still, you know, it's came up a couple of times in conversation and I said, Hey, you know what? I'm going to check it out, but I haven't, I haven't watched it. So uh, that's yeah. a movie that's on my list. What about you, Brian? Same here. Like I remember when it came out, I never saw it. Um, right. I did under, but I understood what it was supposed to be about, but, right. but I don't really know. Um, the actual storyline of it now. I mentioned to Patrick during our last conversation a couple of months ago about the series Knots and Crosses. Are you familiar right. with that at all? I've heard of that, yes, yes. I, I haven't finished the series, but when you get the opportunity, watch Knots, N-O-U-G-H-T-S, and Crosses, Knots and Crosses. Oh. Write it down. Yeah, yeah. It, it's it's right. an alt world's version set in Africa where the Africans are superior and the white folks are the lower caste people. Okay. Um, a, somebody by the name of CJ asked, what genre would you place the book in if you have one? Historical fiction, but, but alternative historical fiction. Um, you know what's funny, and I'm going to speak to this now because I think it's a great point. What's, what's funny to me um, is that like, so like, you know, we run like Facebook ads and stuff like that. And so what's interesting to me is how like on some of the Facebook ads, which you know, has a wide berth that, um, you know, you get all kinds of people that's going to respond. And you know, of course. You, have some, you have some people in support and some, some people who is just like, ew, like they're really going hard against it. What's interesting to me is, and I have a rule where I, I never, never respond to a negative, a negative comment right. ever. You'll never get a response right. from me. Um, but, you know, with the heckling and the animosity towards the alternate reality of Black Cotton, it, it, it really sticks out to me because, like, Philip K. Dick wrote, you know, uh, <laughs> uh, like, you know, he, he Electric wrote, uh, Dreams. No, the um. Well, yeah, I mean, he wrote a bunch of science fiction, but he, but his, um, Man in High Castle was, well, you know, was made into uh, an Amazon original. Phenomenal that, series. But Man in right. High Castle is a phenomenal series. I heard it was. I've never seen it yet. It is but phenomenal. I, you know, it's on my list. Yeah, it's interesting to me, you know, which is, you know, that's alternative, rea history. like alternative yep. history. Yep. But it's never been called anti-Semitic. Right. Never. Right. But, but there's so many comments about black cotton that's that says it's racist, right. and so speaking to the genre thing, I think it's interesting um, that you have two works of fiction that's in the same genre. I guess that's historical right. fiction, alternative historical fiction, and one is racist, but one is not. And what it boils, simply, yeah, what it boils down to is white people are not accustomed to not being on top. That a lot of white folks aren't accustomed to seeing that, and they don't like any idea where they're not superior to anybody else. And anything contrary to that is racist. For those who don't know, we were talking about the show called The Man in the High Castle. It's an Amazon Prime series that's about four seasons or so long. And in that world, what happens is instead of the allies 
winning World War II. The yeah. Axis powers win World War II, which means that the United States of America is divided into two sections. The East Coast of America is run by the Germans and the West Coast, like from California all, all the way over to Nevada, is run by Japanese. And there are people who we would call Americans who have a re rebellion trying to overthrow their overlords who they lost to during World War II. It is an absolutely phenomenal series and I highly recommend it. It's The Man in the High Castle on Amazon Prime. So, uh, Paul, were there any other questions on Black Comics Forever? Uh, there wasn't any for there, but uh, on Black Comic Lords, uh, Derek Harrison asked, am I perceiving correctly that the younger Cottons are getting tired of their family greeting? Mm, not Black all Cotton. of them. Not all of them. Um, uh, here's what I'll say, because we were going to go into issue number two, because in issue number one is really just laying the groundwork. In mm -hmm. issue number two, we start peeling the onion back and you start actually... Um, you start to get a glimpse of the different personalities of each of the kinds. Uh, you see Jalissa and Elijah, you, ha you see them having a conversation, an intimate conversation together, and you really understand how they think and how that 1% mindset is ingrained in them. Uh, you also see how Zion is dealing with the uh, shooting that happened. So you see how he is struggling sort of to uh, fit in with his uh, law enforcement counterpart counterparts. Uh, also how just the uh, social uh, unrest that is around him, the people protesting outside of his apartment is all starting to affect him. So you start to see and hear his thoughts but then you also see uh, the role that Kia is playing as the, uh, the CCO of Ventures and how her father has placed her basically like put the responsibility on her to handle Zion and handle that situation. So she is really, you know, you see the stress that is being placed upon her, but then you also get a glimpse of uh, Xavier, and that's your boy. where your boy. Yeah, <laughs> you, you, you I know you're not, yo. I know you're not talking to me, B. I know you're not talking to me. That ain't my boy. That's that's your boy. <laughs> you you get to see Xavier, and 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 you really start uh. to see his um the friends, his circle of friends that he hang with, <laughs> and you start uh getting a taste of his mentality and what he thinks. And that is the first time you get the sense of um, sort of the rebellion, rebellious nature that he has uh, within him. How old is he? How old, how old would you say 16. he is? 16? He, he's 16, 16 years old. And where are they? What, like, what, let me ask you this. Northern one. Virginia. Okay. So are the states and cities the same in this world as it is in our quote unquote world. <laughs> so the names are not. No, no spoilers. Yeah. No spoilers. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You'll you'll see in issue five and six, um, like you know, if you pay attention to some of the captions, um oh, yeah. we, we we started off saying Northern Virginia, but in the dialogue, you know, in the captions, in you know, you'll see in five and six where you know. Um, there's they're very specific verbiage um, that will allude back to something that you were saying, Paul, uh, about the heritage, about the ancestry, um, right. and that's going to unfold more. Um, one, I'm we're both really excited about issue three yeah. because some of the verbiage in issue three is really going to kind of open the door for like, oh, uh, like that. Okay, that's interesting. Because of the ideology, yeah. uh, like the religion, the mind, like the mindset, you'll begin to see a little bit more of like, like you know, that affects what they say in the vernacular, you know, uh, like you know, even to the point like, oh my god, oh my god, isn't oh my god? It should be like, oh, oh my ra, 
<laughs> you 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 will see. Yeah, 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 yeah. So there's some allusion to uh, that ideology and right. Why society. so long between issues? Well, it's not. These are on a monthly base now. Okay, so yeah. there was like a two month gap between one and two. Right. So yes. what you're saying is going forward, it's going to be a monthly situation. Correct. Yes. I don't. I can't, know. I can't. I'm sitting there going. <laughs> more black comments. <laughs> Jay Rowdy. Jay Rowdy. <laughs> I don't I don't know if we discussed this before, Patrick, mm-hmm. but how did you guys get hooked up with Scout Comics? Oh, oh yeah, we talked about that. But I'm gonna let Brian because that's that's his buddy. That, so, you know, like I said, when I said oh uh, it's all about timing, uh it really was uh timing and I'll say this and then I'm gonna just let you tell the story, Brian. Uh, when I go into prisons, God do prison ministry. Uh, when I go into prisons, I all, often tell them that your job is to go. It's not your job to think about or try to figure it all out. If God has set something up for you, then your job is just to go because the provisions have already been made. And what you will see is that the domino effect will happen. And that's what happened. Me, Brian, you know, hooked up and the domino effect just went into, uh, it it was already laid out for us. And we just basically, we're just walking into our destiny. So, uh, so go ahead, Brian, you know, how we get hooked up with Scout. (laughs) So, I mean, it speaks to exactly what Patrick is saying is that, you know, um, you know, I was fortunate through freelancing and some of the the other projects that I've been working on. I uh, I got linked up with the CEO of Scout, Bernadine, uh, who is you know he's really a, you know he's just a good person. You know he's real chill, real cool, and um, and you know we uh, developed a relationship, uh, a friendship, a kinship, um, and so when we were developing black cotton and we got to the point where we had some art and Patrick and I was really trying to figure out okay well what avenue are we going to take this you know are we going to self-publish this like what what do we want to do um because I because the onset it wasn't like we're going to create black cotton and then we're going to try to get published it was like we we wanted to create black cotton uh and we just didn't know like we didn't have a mind to say here's the avenue so once we had like a product we were beginning to think okay well what should we do with this? And so with that relationship, because you know what? It's important to say that life, the building blocks of life are found in relationships. It's found in relationships. Um, and, you know, I had a relationship with Brendan. And so I sent him an email. Well, I sent him a, a, a message through Facebook. I'm like, hey, look, here's what, you know, um, we got going on, you know, uh, Patrick Fullman and I, and here's the initial premise of it. Uh, you know, you know, can we send this over? And he's like, yeah, send that over. And so, you know, we went through the submission guidelines, to, you know, to make sure everything is I's dotted, T's crossed, and we and we sent it in. Um, he then shared it, you know, with uh, the rest of the team there. And a few a few weeks later, like maybe a couple of weeks, we got the uh, the email back, you know, welcoming us, welcoming us to the Scout family. And those were little words. I mean, like it literally said, you know, we we like to welcome you. Where are uh, they out of? Where's Scout? I'm sorry to interrupt you. Where's uh, Florida? New Jersey. Their 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 headquarters is based in New Jersey, like their original headquarters. But you know, there's so many workers that's spread that's, out. Yeah, you know, because everyone's remote anyway. Um, and they literally said, we want to welcome, uh, you guys and black cotton to the scout family. And, you know, that's how it's been, you know, since that moment, uh, they've been in support and they push and they've been, and they've had the back of this, of this comic, you know, from, from day one. Um, and, you know, I like to think that, you know, not, not every, not every publisher would have had, uh, that support for this kind of comic. Um, and at the end of the day, not even fully knowing where it's going hundred percent, you know, they got the premise, 
and they got the idea, the overall idea of it, but they trusted um, in the story of it. Um, and they, they've been behind us ever since. Who is your artist for Black Cotton? That's a good Mar question. How'd Marco you, how'd you look up with him? I am Marco. glad you brought him up. Look, Marco, I've known Marco for a couple of years. You know, we've worked on a couple of smaller projects. Um, he was working on a web comic that I was doing called Separate But Equal. Um, and, and Marco and I have just built, you know, just a, what I would like to say is a good relationship. Um, and so when Patrick and I began talking about Black Cotton, I was like, well, look, Patrick, I think Marco is it. And so I showed Marco some of, uh, I'll, I'll show, show Patrick some of Margot's work and, you know, he was familiar with Separate but Equal and we talked about style and Patrick gave the approval. He thought, yeah, I think this is the guy. And uh, he began to do the, the concept and um, Marco has just been phenomenal. And he is, it, it, it's, it's not only just about just, I would be remiss if I didn't say this, is that well, Patrick and I, you know, we've conceived this, you know, it's, it's, it's IP, right? It's right. in our minds and, you know, we're writing it out. Marco has his pencil, his finger, his, I mean, dare I say soul, mind to the pulse of what this is. And he's been able to bring it to life, um, to breathe life, to, to birth it. You know, he, he really understands the message in it, he sees it, he and he visualizes it, he's he's in tune to the vision. And you know, him and the whole team, Francisco, Jerry, they've they've just really embraced what black cotton is. And you know, everything that you and me and all of us see in front of us and in our hands is because, you know, it's it's, it's a bunch of people just bringing the vision to life. Did you guys give Marco an idea of what you wanted these characters to look like besides the Zena King? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. We, yes. we gave him uh, our vision. Uh, yeah. And basically, he took what we gave him. And then, you know, it's, it, it's, it's a two way street. You know, we give him some free, freedom to, you know, uh, add in his, you know, uh, style mm -hmm. and vision. But then it comes back to us and we basically, you know, either approve or disapprove, you know, it's that, it's that type of uh, thing. But uh, it really speaks to the family. That's the beauty about the Black Kind family. I mean, with Marco Paragini, you know, we have two main artists, Marco Paragini and uh, Marcelo uh, Santana. Uh, Marco's in Italy and uh, uh, Marcelo, he's in Brazil. So we, we, we are diverse to the core, uh, even with, within the Black Kind family, the Black Kind team, uh, our letterer, uh, uh, was it? Uh, yeah. Uh, Francisco Zamora. Francisco Zamora. Ah, uh, shoot, man. Uh, Jerry, you know? <laughs> it, okay, it, it, is, it is crazy, you know? But I love it because we can truly show to the world that this is a, a, a world team. It is a diverse world team. So this mm -hmm. isn't just uh, me and Brian. Yes, we're the, uh, the spearheads, the creators, the concept, but we are also uh, two individuals that are in, uh, we're not exclusive of people, we're inclusive of well, people. Let me say this from a personal standpoint. This is the foil cover of Black Cotton number one, but it's got a white cover on the front and a white cover on the back. I need some art on this. So are you saying I got to send my book all the way to Italy to get some art on this? Is that what you're no, saying? No, no, no. Send it to me and I can draw something for you, brother. Okay, I can draw something. <laughs> I don't stick figures. <laughs> I draw a hey, hey, I put hey, a I draw, smiley face on there for you. I draw a mean Bart Simpson, bro. Yeah, no, bro. Mean. no bro. I, I'm going to just go ahead and send my shit to Italy and be done with it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, uh, hey, that's the one thing that I love about that. Because um, we also hive comments um, 
they did an exclusive uh, number two uh, cover. And they did the same thing. And me and you think alike, man, because I was like, you know what? We need to send these off to yeah. uh, uh, Marco and Marcelo and yes. get them to, you know, draw yes. on that white. Yeah. Yes. I, I need some <laughs> art on this. <laughs> okay, so let me ask you guys this. And I'm imagining going forward, we will learn about the Nightingale family. What yeah. can you tell us thus far about the Nightingales? Well, you learn uh, you learn some uh, some more about them in uh, issue number two because they're at the front. We uh, because it's a continuation of Elizabeth being in the hospital, so you get uh, dialogue and some insight into uh, sort of their their family conversation and how they're dealing with the situation. But what I will tell you is, I'll put this out there in <laughs> issue number four you really get a deep dive in uh, the Nightingales. What can you give us right now, though? That's not a spoiler, but that gives us some insight for those of us who really want to know. Okay. It, it, here's what I would say. Um, they're your uh, middle to lower class uh, individual family. So if we stick to the uh, structure of flipping the social order, they're going to have the struggles sort of going back to the conversation that we had at the beginning of uh, our discussion uh, with the, you know, how you called it uh black porn. Yeah. Yeah. Black trauma, black trauma porn. Black, black trauma porn. Black porn is something completely different. <laughs> I got some strikes for you. It is. But black it is. trauma porn is something different than. <laughs> So hold on. Us very men know that. <laughs> Us very men know hey, that. Hey, hey, hey y'all don't look that up. <laughs> Especially not on a work device. Yeah, it will not, it will not be oh, accepting do any hashtags of that nature. Thank you very much. <laughs> so what you're going to uh, see <laughs> is the things that you see uh, Hollywood and mainstream consistently shining the light on us going through that's what you're gonna see them going through you're gonna see that you know um they're, they're struggling with um everyday issues and family issues you're gonna see that um even elizabeth we're gonna do even more a deep dive in the struggles that she is going through with college she she's not uh mm -hmm. in school on a um on an academic scholarship, she's in school on an athletic scholarship, you know? So, so her being shot jeopardizes her scholarship. Her education, yeah. Exactly. Are her parents educated? No. So, yeah, uh, well, I, I mean. To a point, they're not college okay. educated. Let, let's stop, stop, stop. You know what we mean. Yeah, we're so all look. college educated individuals here. Yeah. Look, when we say educated, we mean college educated. Are her parents no, college no, educated? no, no. So it comes down to, and here's the real cool thing, like, and I try to wrap my mind around it as well, right? And Patrick and I have several conversations. We've had several conversations about this, more than several. Like, at, at the end of the day, I mean, the best way to understand this is that the Nightingales are your middle-class Black family right. in real life. And... Right. Uh, the Cottons are your 1% white family in real life. Right. And so what's interesting about this is that when you're reading it, because depending on what you're taking into it, and depending on your race and, and your perception, you know, you're looking at <laughs> the Cottons and you're seeing, you're, you're, you're seeing black people, right? But they're not really black. Like they're actually representative of the 1% white. But at the same time, they are infused also with with black and with Africa and with ancestry. So it's this, it's this hybrid that does kind of like a mind F because it's not complete. It's, it's it, according to the social order, they're not who African-American middle-class African-Americans will relate to. But at the same time, visually they are. Gotcha. And so at some point we should be seeing if the social orders are changed and, and the mores and the styles are more of an Af African influence society, an African dominated society. 
Blacks or Africans or African Americans represent the majority, that is the standard by which uh, even beauty is is determined. So I think about the workplace. Mm-hmm. We're gonna have there should be a, a a scenario where you see some of the white people with like braids or corn rolls or something, right? Because the standard of beauty isn't we're going to straighten our hair. Right. It's we are the standard of beauty of the majority society should be kinky hair or afros or braids or locks or something. That should be the standard of beauty. So the white people trying to fit in to that social norm standard of what's considered beautiful in the majority society, these people should now be trying to get afros and cornrows and what have you. And you're also going to see it even stems down to uh, the weight. For instance, uh, if you uh, go back and look, you'll see that like uh, Kia um, and a lot of the characters are very curvy. And uh, you'll see that as we go on and on, (laughs) you're going to see even that the norm of the body shape is not the same just like you know how we we've grown up to believe that you know you got to be you know uh done skinny and nope. you know that's not, the not, whole, not, nope, nope. That, <laughs> nope. yeah. so, so you're saying you're saying the white girls in black cotton are thick <laughs> <laughs> but but look so so the interesting the interesting thing about that is this is you know we're in this reality now. So we only have what we have and we only know what we know. And we're only the composite of everything that has already been. And so what we definitely do try to do is bring um, ancestry and heritage, you know, to the forefront, but with the balance. And the and the balance exists because see, we are also, and this goes back to our our personal history, like we are always trying to regain and recapture identity right. because it was stolen from us. Right. And so while we're trying to recapture identity, there are certain things about our appearance and certain things about, uh, about us that we bring forward that what if that identity was never stolen? Right. Would we still right. try to bring those things forward? Then it would so, evolve. Right. Or would they evolve naturally? So what we have in black cotton in in the Black Cotton universe is we have a, a, a group of Black people who never lost their identity. They never lost it, which is which is a concept that we in this real world as Black people can never completely fully fathom in its purity. Right. But they never lost their identity. So everything that they do is from a point of power. It's from a point of privilege. It's from a point, like it's a different kind of privilege, which goes to issue two, black privilege. And that's what we're seeing. And so the, the interesting, we've been in conversation about like, you'll notice that some of the vernacular, like some, you know, it's, it's not all 100% proper English and it's, it's some slang mixed in. And that's because it couldn't be 100% proper English because guess what? We're not living off the Queen's English, right. the King's English, because European immigration didn't happen first. Right. So so, so slang isn't slang from like, well, we're like, you know, we didn't know. So here's how we began to speak or, you know, this certain groups. African did this. shorthand, right. Exactly. So even language comes from a different place. So to say, yo, like, what's up? Isn't what's up because, you know, we're running words together. It's a natural progression that took place. So it's a balance of different dichotomies because we're we're existing in a, a universe where slavery in our mind I mean it I I mean we all I mean I struggle with it um, yeah we both it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting because you know as you go on and you, and you delve into the the backstory and the back history of it you know you're gonna have to define how certain things came to be because if you have this African immigration, um, you would think that the the surnames of, of these people would be like Okonkwo or something like that, you know, mm-hmm. not Nightingale. So at some point, as you said, there's a balance, right? 
So yeah. something happened in the history where that sort of balanced out. Now, and I'm, I'm very curious to see yeah. how you guys do that in the future. Absolutely. Thank you for that. And yes, yeah. you're spot on with that. Yeah. All right. Switching gears on you guys real quick. A couple of things. Paul, why don't you go ahead and take that image uh, number three off? Yeah. All right. So, Brian, you collect comic books. I, so I would call myself a collector. I'm a reader. He's the collector. Okay. Like, but I read a bunch of comics, though. Yeah, yeah. But do you buy them when you read? I buy them. I so buy them. I buy them digitally. Yeah. I buy in, like, I buy physical. Yeah, I buy them. What are you currently collecting and reading? What's on Man, your I pull list? I, could, I, I wish I could show you guys you my floor right You've now. got time. All what right. So you? look, look. Look at my floor right now. Wait a second. Oh, <laughs> tell me what's there. What's what's there? I got what that. I got that Black Panther right there. Yeah, I got a bunch of Black Panther over there. I I got a bunch of Firepower. Firepower, Robert Kirkman. I got Shadow Man. Shadow Man's my joint. You got oh, the good yo, cover too. I got Daily. Department got, of Truth. Department of Truth. I got Daily Class over here. Daily, got, hold. Stop right there. Did you watch that series? It only got I one did. season. I didn't watch it. Like, Man, that show was so good. I went show back. Was so good. I went back to try to find it on Sci-Fi, and it was gone. Was it was dead. good. Deadly Class what? is good. Deadly Class. Yo, is good. I love the comics. That's my jam. Okay. What else you got? All right. Um, <laughs> so look, my my Marvel and DC, like my, I'm very particular. Okay. So Batman for me. Batman, Joker, uh, and Justice League Dark is where I'm at. Like Justice League dance. Dark is that joint. Justice oh, League is. Dark is really good. It is that joint. Did yeah. you hey? Did you read Justice League Odyssey? Uh, no, no. Okay, I am a huge. I'm a. I'm typically a Marvel guy, right? Mm -hmm. And I love the um, universal stories, like with um, Better Ray Bill, Silver Surfer, things of that mm -hmm. nature. Justice League Odyssey is DC's answer to that, where you have Cyborg, Starfire, um, get, uh, what's what's the guy who, Azrael, Azrael okay. are off in space. Justice League Odyssey is about 25 to 30 issues. I highly recommend Justice League Odyssey. It is it very, down. very good. Very good. Down. Yeah. Um, like... Like, I don't even try to like cover the bandwidth of Marvel and DC. I hit on like just the ones that 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 fit me. Um, I got the Green Lantern joint. That was good. Green Lantern, Green Lantern is good. Yeah. good. Look, look yeah. you're not you know Ryan, you're not really missing much on 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 the Marvel front because Marvel's not putting out too too many good comics right now. That's what I, yeah. DC's consensus. really got the better stories. And, and quite frankly, I got more indies than anything else. Same here. I got Once in Future. Are, are y'all on Once in Future? Not yet, no. Once no. in Future, yo. That Oh, yo. That's Have you read Eve? Are you reading Eve? Yo, I went to the, yo, I refused to buy the digital copy of Eve. I went to my store. It wasn't on my pool. It was sold out. I'm waiting for the next one to come in. Is that good? Because I heard oh, it is. Good. It's good. It's okay, good start. Let me tell you. Start. Eve, Two Moons, and Noctera. Oh, Noctera alone. Noctera. 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 My God, that's yeah. a good book. Noctera is yeah. good. Noctera. I haven't read issue three yet, but I read one and two. And what I'm about like, Berserk? Yo, what about Berserk? I have issue one and two. I haven't read them yet, though, but I have. Those are good. Basically, what you have is Vandal Savage meets John Wick. That's exactly what it oh, is. That's, that's I mean, why they're doing a Netflix that's, that's series. Actually a, that's actually a pretty accurate description. Right. It it's very okay. Savage, Savage meets John Wick. Yes. Very. And I, I give you a slight spoiler. His mom's black. What? His mom's black. Yeah. It is his dad is still out. kind of questionable. We don't know who his dad is okay, yet. Okay, that's interesting. His mom is black. Right. That's interesting. Yeah. Okay, because I read somewhere that that his mom was supposed to come in. Did she come in in, yeah, in she issue came two? In issue two. It is yeah, two. okay. It. Yeah. Yep. I still got it. We don't know who we don't know who her yeah. father his father is yet. But... No, no, no. I mean, yeah, we do. It was it was in issue two. Uh, reread it. You don't know who his father is because y'all gonna make me read that tonight, huh? Okay. 
Yeah. Like, like his, mother's, his, mother's, um, his mother's wife is not his father. Hmm. Well, okay. Basically, she it's kind of like a Trigon um, Raven's mother type situation is what we have. So, so immaculate that, conception, kind of. Yeah, that's sort of. it. So, Patrick, what are you reading right now? Right now, I'm reading... Uh, I don't know if y'all y'all into it, but it's actually pretty good. Uh, the Shepherd. Uh, I haven't heard that one. No. Of comics. Yeah, the Shepherd. Shepherd's pretty good. It, 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 uh, Hold that up again. Hold it up again. I'm not familiar with that at all. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's not bad at all. Basically, uh, a father who loses his son, and then he uh, unfortunately uh, commits suicide uh, to go and find his son. His son is uh, trapped between. Uh, it's called the stream, and his uh, he go he commits suicide so that he can go and find his son and help his son uh, basically cross over. And uh, he's going through, you know, some things. It's, it's it's not bad at all. I I I hadn't read it, and I had the collector's edition, so I said, you know what? Let me go ahead and get the trade paperback in and, and check it out. And I, I'm thoroughly enjoying it, to be honest. But what I want to read, what I've been collecting, is uh, obviously I got you know uh, I got one and two. You know of uh Berserk. Yeah. That's my dude. Yes. So I there are a lot of variant covers of a Berserk. Lot. Yeah. Yes. A lot. Which which leads to my next question. Even though the artist that you guys have is doing an extremely good job, uh huh. Who would you guys want to work with outside of Marco? Yo, right here, Zoe. <laughs> Who, who is that? Something is killing Zoe. the children. And this is uh, she did the cover for um, uh, something is killing the children. Oh, uh, this is number uh, uh, number fifteen. That's a scout comic, or is that a? Oh, no, this is a uh, uh, something killing the children. Boom, boom. And that's boom as well. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So oh, that's man. that's like it's like a one word thing, like Prince or Vanity is Zoe. Uh, Zoe, what's her? I, I can't pronounce her uh, last name. It start with an L. Oh, uh, I know about Zoe. <laughs> is she a woman of color? Not that it matters one way or the other, but no, nah, no, nah, she's not a, a woman of color. Nah. Okay, but you like her, her, oh, yeah. her work. Yeah, I, I, I love her work. I also like uh, Jenny, Jenny, uh, Jenny Frisson. Yeah. Oh my God, she's like one of the hardest, hottest artists out right now. I know. I got this. This you asked what I was collecting. Uh, as you can see, this is uh something. Children. Five point eight. <laughs> yeah yeah so so i, I tell you brother you guys need to get on you is uh he's like my favorite cover artist right now olivier copiel olivia olivier yeah. copiel i've heard the name yeah i'm gonna have to i'm gonna have to um uh, i know that you've seen his work i'm probably murdering his name he's it's a french name but olivier copiel young cat br brother he's real good real good there is a book out. Carrie Randall. Give me a Carrie Randall. Patrick, there, what is this. Patrick, Good on, luck Patrick. getting him. <laughs> Give me a Carrie <laughs> Randall so cover, yeah. Hold on a second. Patrick, There's... hold that up again. <laughs> what is that? another tonight? one from uh, uh, Something is Killing the Children. I want to read this series. That's why I'm, you know. Oh, that series I'm... is, look, James Tenyon, that's my dude, yo. Yeah. What he's that doing on Batman is, is just. That it's, dude can write. It's crazy. Yes. Is he that a dude can color? Write, yeah. Is he a person of color? Yes. He's James, dope. Nah, nah, nah. White dude. Yeah. Ra black, yeah. radiant black. Do you like that? I haven't uh, checked it out yet. I got another copy coming, but this was my collector's, you know, copy that I wanted yeah. to get. Yeah. But I heard good things about it, so it's selling like crazy. Right. What I like this is when they four. do second printings and third printings of that. It's not just a reprint of the original. They do a right. completely different. Yeah. Cover. If you let me give you guys a word of advice as as a as a comic book collector and reader, when you do your second and third prints, make sure it's different than the original. The oh, fans yeah. appreciate that. Hey, you get I'm more sales that way too. I'm a collector. That's why you know. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, hey. We have we have had a different cover. This this second print, man. No, that's, I don't, don't have know. that one. I don't have no. that one yet. 
Now that was this the, the first uh, print, print but like, exclusive. This was fire. Everybody was trying to get this when it came out. Yeah, yeah, yeah that one. Yeah. It was. It wasn't easy to find either. It's only five hundred of them. Yo, Pat, if you got like five or six in your collection, yeah. <laughs> Bump that. I'm just saying. If y'all just so happen to Yo, have those metal covers, that's one that I want. That's you got the purple rain bit of root. <laughs> yeah, I, I just got. That. I just got that, that last week. I got the virgin cover. Oh <laughs> yeah. wow! Oh I my god! I'm so happy I got that. And that's I the one I really one wanted. That's um, do the right thing variant cover. Those are the two that I want for my collection. Oh, that's that's two hundred dollars on eBay right now. Have yeah. y'all seen this? What is what that? Is that? No. This is uh, Miss Meow number one. What and is that? Miss Meow number heard one. Heard that one? Yeah, I hadn't heard of it either, but I saw the cover. I was like, you know what? Hey, I like it. <laughs> He's a collector. What, the, yeah. what company is that? And what is it about? Have you read it? No, not yet. I just got it yesterday, so I haven't been able to, you know. Uh, but I, I just saw the cover, and I was like, you know what? It's the number one. It's the Virgin. Let me, uh, let me check it out. Do we have any more hot covers of Black Cotton coming out? You guys got some special Ooh, oh, laser right. etched, you know, Ooh. made out of platinum uh, and foil hey, look, look. editions we, we got coming up that we need to be Here, on the hunt. Here's what I'll tell you. Cause, cause me and Brian, I, we, we truly um, is, a, is a, I don't want to say a match made in heaven, but uh, we, <laughs> we, it's like the perfect team. So, I'm always thinking about the collectors and the covers, you know? Right. So while he's thinking about, you know, uh, writing the concept and everything, and I'm always, hey, on already shot something to Marcelo or, hey, do this cover, you know, boom. So basically, I'm telling you right now, there's three covers that's coming out that you don't want to miss. We Wait, got three? Three? covers. Huh? Can't just tell. Me. Look, Wait, I'm gonna need you guys to like email oh, 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 me the God. links for issue three to or which what? Bro? Stores are selling these covers because I it's hard tracking these things down. Here, here's, what I'm, here, here's what we're gonna do. And uh, don't, don't tell everybody because they'll <laughs> they'll sell out. <laughs> email me, message you me go off camera, bro. You off go camera, off camera where I could get these. Here, here's what we're gonna do. And, and, I ain't and going <laughs> what we're gonna do. To, to help everybody out because uh, uh, you're right. A lot of people miss out on, you know, those exclusive covers. And, and truly, we got three covers that are coming out that people don't want to miss out on them. They are for, for number three. Huh? Not for issue number three. It's, uh, it's uh, five, four, five, six. and six. Yeah. Four, five, and six. Yeah. Wait, uh, wait, wait. So what you're saying is there are three different covers for four, five, and six each. Oh yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. I'm, 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 I'm a, well, I'm also gonna have to require a Black Comic Lords edition. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> Ooh, okay. Hey, that's okay. something to think about. That's that something. Is, hey, yeah. hey, we we can talk about that definitely. Yeah, we can talk yeah. about Black Comic Lords edition. But what, what what we me and Brian we were actually talking about this the other day, and uh, something that uh, we probably would do simply because we want to make sure that everybody have an opportunity to uh, get those exclusive covers. So yeah. we're going to uh, reveal them, you know, we're going to set a date and time and reveal it right at that time and let people, you know, at that time when it's also, uh, we'll let people know, hey, it's going on sale at this exact time. Y'all better, look, you just, you just promised that. Y'all better drop where we're supposed to get it down here so we know where to go first. Hey, hey, right we will. Down. We will. We will. I, I yeah, promise yeah. you, we will. Because uh, these Y'all three... have me hunting all over the damn place for this damn <laughs> book, man. It's bitter. But, but look, look, we didn't know, like, so with that cover right there... You didn't there, know your like... you didn't know your comic was going to blow up like that. <laughs> we did. We didn't know that that cover especially <laughs> was going to be like, like a thing. Like, I mean, we liked it. We are like, yo, that cover is... Whoa, y'all like Tia looking good. I literally but, had to go to every comic book store in the Orlando area. Nobody had it. <laughs> Nobody had it. Finally it was only 500 or, or yeah, like five or six hundred of those. Yeah, so, five hundred. Yeah. yeah. How many of the foil foil covers were there? 
of the um, what was that? Foil cup. Yeah, I, I got it. no damn foil Dude. cup. Yeah, the, uh, you're talking about, uh, yeah. From Hive, right? No, no, no. Oh, from Farsight. Yeah. I think it was, it was 250, 250 right? 250. 250. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I, I need some I need some specific art on this one. Yeah. <laughs> I told you I got you. Okay. Oh, right. man, I got you, my Bart Simpson. I got Bart you, Bart Simpson. Simpson. I, yeah, no, no, not you. <laughs> and he's the Bart Simpson's going to have a, a word bubble that says Black Cotton. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Hey, we even color barred in. We're so let me ask you this: who, who else in the in the comic book industry would you guys want to work with as far as art is concerned? Now, before you answer that, there there is a book that I started reading because I saw the cover of it and it was just phenomenal. This book called Uber that is set during World War II, and the artist is a brother by the name of Kanan White for the first several issues. Oh, hmm. I know. Kanan I'm gonna White. tell you something. That brother right there, <laughs> yo, Kanan mm-hmm. White. Mm-hmm. And his work is, to me, phenomenal. And I loved those first few issues. He was the artist on them, loved it. Besides, who in the industry would you guys want to work with? And and with all due respect to Marco, you know, not saying that his work is bad at all, because it's not. Uh, we love Marco. Who would you want to work with? I like the story. name uh, Sean Hill. What's his uh, name, Brian? Sean Hill. Sean yeah. Hill's fl- he's fabulous. Like uh-huh. he did some work with David Walker on The Hatred, uh, but he also has some work in there with uh, he did a, a Marvel anthology, I believe, too. Sean Hill is phenomenal. Yeah. Phenomenal brother. Um true story. Ken White has a variant cover for issue five of Devil's Dominion um, on Black Box Comics. That just um, came out, right? Issue four uh, came out. Issue, issue five. Oh, issue five is about variant. to come out. Okay. Yep. He he acted as a virgin variant. Um, and and um, yeah, like the publisher, Demetrius, he showed it to me. I was like, wow. Like it's, it's phenomenal. So yeah, so just Keep that in mind. Um, I, I, yo, I just wrote it down. <laughs> but yo, I was saying, Carrie Randolph, for sure. Like, Excellence is my book. Yeah. Excellence. Yeah. Like, I heard it got optioned. I don't know who got really? it. I don't know I what happened to that. I heard the optioned. same thing. I, I, yeah. I put Mark, I put Mark I on Excellence. Anything. Yo, give me an excellent TV show now. Like, you want to talk about me. Harry Potter blowing up, oh. man? You know how Yo, you know how you know yes. on Twitter, Yo, you know on Twitter there's like black hogwarts hogwarts is like a big thing. Yeah. You know? <laughs> That's yeah. excellence, man. It's like excellence is it, yeah. Okay, it's I haven't read it hogwarts, yet. I've got man. like several issues of it, but I haven't read it yet. Because I don't have I don't have one through whatever's out, so I'm uh, kind of waiting. Look, let me tell you how much I love this book. I dropped money on that Kickstarter just to get the hardback joint. Oh, wow. I, I just wanted to have it on my shelf because I've already read the issues. I just wanted to have it. Excellence, Brandon Thomas, Kerry Randolph. Yo. Mm-hmm. I, psh, they let are, me, yo. Let me, that let book me right there. Excellence. Like I said, I, it's Paul told me about it. It's on my pull list. <laughs> I don't have all of them. I have several of them, but not all of them. It's, but the, modern, it's the modern age Black Panther. Okay. Yep. Speaking of me. Black Panther, let me switch me. gears on you. Mm-hmm. For me personally, Christopher Priest is a phenomenal writer. He is, for me, the third best writer of Black Panther behind Reginald Hudlin, uh Don McGregor. What's his name? Don McGregor. Don McGregor and Christopher Priest. Now, Christopher Priest had a book called Sacred Six. Okay. Right, right. Read it. Have you read Sacred Six? I have not. I, I have not. No. I've been watching it, though. Everybody watches it. Uh, Everyone watches it because of the covers. Yeah. Right, exactly. That's what I was going to say, because uh, they had that uh, the black chick on the yeah. cover that was... It there's, was like, there's like two black characters in the book. Ooh, was that... Wait, wait, wait. Was that the book that went like six issues and like all origin stories? I don't know about that. No, okay, okay. No, 
I'm thinking it's something but it's else. Got, it's got covers like that that draws draws people. Draws people yeah. in. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Because I wanted your opinion on it. Because I'm a Christopher Priest fan. Sacred Six. I'm writing but, it down. Well, yeah. hold, hold, well, hold not so down. fast. Before you write it down, <laughs> before you write it down. Again, I'm a Christopher Priest fan on his work on Justice League, on his work on Deathstroke, on his work on Black Panther. However. In reference to Sacred Six, that's why I asked you guys, the professionals, what you thought. Because me, as a comic book collector and fan, I'm not so enamored with Sacred Six. Well, and I'm going to have to read I it now still. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, go ahead. What did we say, Pat? I was just saying, that was my reason why I hadn't pulled the trigger on it. Uh, because I had heard mix you know, uh, uh, reviews on it. I always look up kind of reviews and do a little digging on it. And the only thing that uh, was really popping was the covers. Yes. So, so I, I, that's all I really, uh, uh, I never pulled the trigger on it. For me, like I've, I've, I'm on issue number six now. I've read one through five. And, you know, again, I'm a Christopher Priest fan, mm -hmm. but I'm, I'm, mm. <laughs> well, well, see, I'm not going to have to read it because I got to weigh in on this opinion now. So, okay, <laughs> so I just looked it up and I'm going to copy the first issue on comicsology. Okay. I, I, I'm going to start there. Yo, you, oh, you and I, are issue, no? we're going to have this published have by. Say it again. Who, who is this done by? No, wait, it's it, it's Priest, but who is the publisher? Publisher it's, is Dynamite. Dynamite. Dynamite okay. Yeah. Okay. You and I will have to have an off-camera conversation okay. because one of my issues about this is there's no linear storytelling. Number one, and number two, there is another Dynamite comic, maybe Vampirella or something. Right. That I think it's tied, it's tied in. Christopher Fries used to write that as well. Right. But in order to understand what's going on in Sacred Six, you would have had to understand what's going on in Vampirella. And I don't like that, personally. Yeah. So, you know. All right. that's, 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 that's Mark's review of Sacred Six. And there we go. And there we go. So, so I just, like I said, I wanted the professional guys opinion of it so you know and mark is a big fan of, of christopher priest he's a huge, yeah, fan. Yeah. huge fan huge fan loved his de i'm a huge fan of deathstroke deathstroke is one of my top five comic book characters ever <laughs> and i love right. I, I love christopher priest work on that um i like christopher priest work on justice league that's what got me into justice league now but sacred six mm. didn't do it for you huh not his okay. cup of tea not his cup of tea all right well i just added that on to my car, I'm gonna get it right. You're now. doing it a smart way. I mean, you can always, and a lot of people don't do that. Like, like if you don't know if you if you want to add something to your pull list, just check it out digitally first. Right. See if you dig it. What are you collecting, uh, Pat? Shoot, that's what I was. Uh, uh, shoot, this this is my big thing right now. That's something that's killing the children. Yeah, something. That's that's one of the most popular comics right now. Yeah, I, I, I Indian, take it, man. Hold on, check this out. So, uh, last Sunday, I played Ultimate Frisbee. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a beast with Ultimate Frisbee. So basically, you're playing uh, white boy is what you're saying. Go ahead. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they actually used to have an Ultimate Frisbee park right in my neighborhood. Oh, for real? Yeah, they used to have one. Yeah. Oh, wow, that's cool. Hey, hey, hey we're gonna have to get you back out there. <laughs> but, but. I'm playing uh, Ultimate Frisbee, and at 3 o'clock, there was a comic, uh, Something is Killing the Children. Uh, the last variant for number 16 was uh, coming out. And uh, it's uh, from uh, uh, Kale, K-A-E-L-N-G, -E uh, uh, what is it, N-G-U. Yeah, Kale, yeah. you. Yeah, I know you're talking about. Yeah, so uh, the cover was done by him. Phenomenal cover. And the company's in the UK. So I said, okay, I'm going to have to, you know, stop what I'm doing. I don't care what I'm doing. And I'm going to do this. They had 
uh, triple sign, 20 of them, they had the color splash, 20 of them, triple sign, and uh, 9.8. And then they had the uh, sketch with uh, no diversion cover, 25 of them, triple sign. So I said, uh, I'm going to try and get one of each, you know, because they limited to you can only get one. You couldn't buy multiple. Because if I could, I would have bought four. But <laughs> I bought way. one at 3 o'clock, put them in my cart. I hit uh, complete. And that mother said the color splash was sold out 20 seconds later. Wow. Sold out. Mm. It asked me if I wanted to continue. I said, yeah, I want to continue. And I got the uh, the uh, the Virgin cover, uh, triple sign. And then everything else was sold out. Two minutes and 50 seconds, they sold out 400 copies Jeez. of that thing. That well, was in its eighth printing, isn't it? Isn't it its eighth printing? I think. I, I don't. I don't doubt well, it. That's the, that's the number one. Yeah, and it's they uh, had it's they had the special where if you bought the first and second issues of Berserker, you, you were entitled get. to get the first issue of Something That's Killing the Children for free. But my LCS was not a participant, so I got the first two issues from them, and I called them up. I said, "Yo, where's my where's my?" Issue number one of something's killing the children. You're like, sorry, sir, we're one of the few companies that did not participate. <laughs> in that. But I thought it was garbage. You know, I was like, what's up with that? Wait. I was fortunate though. Uh, our our boy uh, Ken, uh, phenomenal uh, individual uh, from the comic book store. You know, uh, down here in Fredericksburg. Uh, truly love his comic book store. And uh, he gave me one for free. So I was like, hey, I appreciate you, bro. That's so yeah. Cool. Have you ever jumped on, Naughty on, on Nottingham yet? Oh, yes. Fifth printing. Fifth printing. Yeah. Nottingham from Mad Cave Studios. Yeah. What is that about? So, OK, so now I'm I'm not really trying to plug myself, but indirectly, I had to afford, I was fortunate to be the editor on this book for Mad Cave. Okay, uh, go ahead and plug and, yourself, bro. <laughs> and, but but look, phenomenal, phenomenal creative team. David Hazan, Shane Volk, Luca, oh, phenomenal. Okay, so Great Nottingham awesome. is a Robin Hood story that's told from the protagonist's point of, sh of the sheriff of Nottingham being the main guy, not Robin Hood. Right. But Robin Hood is actually more like the bad guy. Yeah, and it's like a dark noir story, action adventure, but dark. Uh, it's it's just, I mean, it's it's going into its fifth printing, which is which is insane. Of course, does it take uh, place in modern times or back no, in the day? Back in the day. Oh, back in the day. Okay. Back in the day. Yeah. The it's artwork like, is phenomenal. Yeah. Nottingham. Okay. Nottingham. Yeah. Cave Studios. yeah, they are. What issue number that, is it on? Um, it's going Wait. into. It's going into, I think three just came out. Yeah, three oh, just so I can came catch out. Up. I, I got that up. on my full yeah. list. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. That 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 story, like, and trust me, like I've read, I read the scripts, I read all of them. It's that story is crucial. All right. And the covers are phenomenal. Going into some of the comments. The covers on that, man. Sick. 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 Going to some of the comments real quick. Derek Harrison basically says that Brian, if you, I got you covered if you want an Eve number one. So Derek Harrison says that he's got an extra copy of Eve number one if you want. He also asks, was there a secret variant of number one second print of Black Tie? <laughs> a secret? Uh, so high comments. I know what he's referring to. He's talking to high comments. <laughs> no, no, no. Man, I bet, think he's talking Brian about better this. not just pull out some secret variant. And is he talking about this? The CBSN. Oh, he that said, hasn't come uh, out yet, right? No, yeah, that came out. out. You can actually get a couple copies on Scout. They have a couple copies. Yeah, I don't know how many. It's not. <gasps> it's not that many in existence. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I think this about is the that. one that he's talking about. Okay. Yeah, and that's the that's the CBSN, right? Right. Okay. I saw. Well, have y'all seen the uh the hive comments 
uh, exclusive one for uh, uh, issue number two? No. Oh, man. No, I thought I had the exclusive one. You telling me hey, this is garbage? Tell Derek, tell Derek that if that's what he's talking about, I'll send him one of those. He sent me E. We good. Okay. Well, oh, I need one too. So how about I, I got you two. I got both of you. Cool. Okay. I got cool. both of you. And I got Derek too. Richard Wright says, save your money. Sacred Six ain't worth it. Listen. <laughs> I already bought it, Richard. I already bought it. The what? Cover is done, the done, Richard. The story is ugh. What uh, what is actually holding up, Patrick? What is this that? This is the uh, exclusive cover from High Comics for issue number two. I I've what never seen that before in my life. I need that. I've never seen that. Yeah, I need <laughs> that. Y'all holding out on me, man. Y'all holding out. Y'all got all these secret variants nobody knows about. <laughs> Come on, man. Who was the artist on that? Who was the artist? Uh 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 Nielsen. Neil uh, Nelson. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to need y'all to post these know. up in the page, man. Let us know that these things are coming. This is not fair. Where, where can we find that? Where can that end this whole interview? About that? No, they look. still got a couple left. And uh, <laughs> if you look up Hive Comics, it's only three up 300 that was uh, ever made. So uh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> I literally make it my job on this page <laughs> to keep up with pre-orders for comics. And y'all just embarrassed me. <laughs> Because look, look. I don't even Patrick, know about that comic. Hey, they did That's a exactly. metal cover. They did 30 metal covers of this. Is I that got the one, one that I have? Huh? Is that the one that I have? The metal cover? Is that the one you put on? Uh, oh, um, Yeah. Let me see. Hold on. Let me go back and look. Because this one is from Farside up in Canada. Right. That one is. I got metal covers. Is that a foil cover, cover or a metal cover? Yeah. Well, it says foil. <laughs> no, no, no. Hive did actual metal covers. Right. Oh, Lord okay. of mercy. I don't so think I, I own a single metal I don't cover. have that one. So do they have more? They might. Hive, <laughs> comes, they they Hive doesn't have any more. <laughs> Hive doesn't have any more? Yeah. You can try. I'm pretty sure that they like. I think they got they more. Those, huh? I mean, I I got more. yeah, this one, uh, yeah, that's the cover you got. You got the variant cover. Yeah. I got the variant cover with, oh boy, the cop on, you know, in, in tin foil. And I'm looking at it right now because I have it in there. It says variant foil limited to 250 art by Ryan Brownie. Right. That's on, uh, that's, that's, the, side. that's blood on his hands. The one you're talking about, the foil cover. That's the one where uh, Zion is on the cover and he has blood yes. on his hands. Yes. Now, so somebody what posted you're it. About, what's your, what you're talking about? Let me look that up. What, what is He's looking for the Hive comic, the original metal cover that, that we signed, Pat. Well, nah, because they, uh, they did two. They did two medals. They did one for uh, issue number one with uh, the uh, Black Cotton. And then they did this one. They did 30 of uh, this cover too. But somebody put it online on your page. This, that's the virgin cover. For issue two. Right. But he's looking for issue one metal is what he's talking about. Oh yeah, that's yeah. gone. <laughs> Thanks a lot, pal. Thank you. <laughs> but look. You guys are Patrick. purveyors of comic books and y'all right. don't let your audience know about the damn comic books coming out. How does that a good business model for y'all? Come on, man. Nah, We're your customers. Right. We are your customers. Man, you are absolutely... I know, I, Look, I, know I put it on y'all page, man. You can't put nothing on our page, man. I'm in charge of the <laughs> what's going on, man. Hmm. I know, I know when I, I, I put y'all in uh the when I uh, when I post on my page, I put the X sign. You know, I, I definitely look. You know what? Now hey, on, man, listen, that's, that's listen, on me. That's listen. not on Brian. That's on me. Listen, and you know when what? You post your books that are coming out on the page. Simple thing. <laughs> put the hashtag Black Comic Pre-orders. Can you do Got that you. for me? I can. So do at that. least we can. 
if 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 you missed it when you're scrolling through the feed, you can go back and click on it and look at it and you can see this there. Because now I'm embarrassed. I didn't oh, even know these books came out. There's editions that haven't come. I'm going out getting all these damn variants, and I ain't got the I got the crappy variants now. <laughs> hey, so that reminds me, Brian. Hey, don't forget, send me your have, address. I got out. you. Just, well, just mm -hmm. all right. I'm sorry, we said. What What else do you have? Because I thought we follow each other on Twitter, mm -hmm. and it seems like there are other things that you have besides Black Cotton that have come out. Or art. yeah, that's right. I wanted to ask that. You do have some other books you're working on. Yeah. Um. So. Um, I'm working with Zenoscope. Um, I have a, it's called Dark Watchers featuring Gretel. Um, it's a 72 page one shot. Uh, you can still, might be able to find it in a store, but I know that you can still order online. Um, and I have a Ben Helsing Black Anis. It's a 32 page one shot with Zenoscope. Um, but also with Black Box Comics, I have a story called Devil's Dominion. I've heard um, of it. Yes. yes, I've heard of that. Yes. yes. It's on uh, issue oh, four. It just came out. Right. That's well, what you're talking about. It's very cool that you heard of it. So that's excellent. Thank you. Um, this story really is, I mean, Devil St. Paul is one of my favorite characters I've ever had a chance to write. Um, and you know, it's can you tell me what that story is about? Because I actually, yeah. I think I have one of the issues listed in our black comic pre orders on the page. Okay, so tell, um, tell, tell us what Devil's Dominion is about. Yes, so it's um, it's about a young woman, Devon St. Paul. Uh, she is um, she sold her soul to the devil, uh, to get out of the situation, a family, a horrible family situation. Um, but after she did that and she got out of the situation uh, through very uh, not so good means. Uh, she then reneged on her deal with the devil. That's not good. And, and she, no, it's not good. And she kept the demonic power with her. Um, and she's a black girl too, right? Cause I think I saw her on the cover. Yeah. Yes, yeah, she is. And she yeah. decided, and, and now she's trying to use her demonic power for good. Um, but the devil is chasing her. Uh, the devil and his hordes, his uh, as is revealed, you know who uh, his his minions, his 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 workers, uh, the supernatural. Right. Um, but yeah, so you know it uh, is 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 it's a tragic story. It's a horror story. It's a dark urban fantasy. Um, devil of Saint Paul, you know, it, you know the creator, uh, the the creator. Uh, Demetrius, you know, he's the owner of Black Box. You know, he allowed me to work with him to 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 build this concept out, to to to, to build in into who she is and what the story is about. Uh, so this story really has a a, a lot of um, a lot of me in it. Like, I have a background in uh, theology, um, and so like a lot of just theological philosophy. Philosophical philosophy. Are you a Catholic? Are you a Catholic? <laughs> I am not. Um, so, <laughs> real quick, the so, drinks time is taking effect. Starting to get me. Starting to get me. Um, <laughs> so, uh, it's very philosophical. Um, I'm not. I'm not a Catholic. So, I've been to seminary. I have a couple of MAs in theology, biblical studies, but it was more of a personal thing for me, uh, right. which then led me down to a lot of. Uh, it led me on the path that I'm still on, uh, which is more about self-knowledge, who I am, um, you know, and um, I wouldn't say I'm, I'm religious now, but I have a deep respect for religion and anthropology and sociology and stuff like that. So, you know, a lot of what Devil's Dominion is, you know, has that infused in it, um, in this journey that Devil and St. Paul is on. Hold on um, a second. Hold on. Hold, time out. Paul, check your text messages. I just sent you a text because I saved the cover that I saw from Twitter that Brian had posted and it was a black female. And I'm like, oh, okay, I'm interested in this. I need to check with my LCS, my local comic book store, about getting that yeah. those those comics. This, this is the this is the latest issue. Yeah. So yes. see if you can put that up so people can see it or whatever. 
So it was, yeah, I'm definitely interested in it because of the fact that it's got a black girl on it. And, and one of the things about the, these groups is we want to highlight black creatives like you, Pat, and like you, Brian, who have created uh, characters, black characters, whatever, because we want to support you guys so that, you know, you have a long life in the industry. Appreciate that. I a hundred percent appreciate that. It's, it's, it's great. Devlin St. Paul, you know, I remember one of our, of our earlier conversations in I, making her who she is, a black female was very important to me. And, and, and when I pitched the idea to the publisher, he was immediately on, because, uh, you know, you don't see a supernatural story like this with a black lead, a black female lead. Yeah. Uh, so for her to be in the position she's in, she's in and who she is and the strength that she has to have, even though she sold her soul to the devil, understanding why she did that throughout this story, it's all about her her weakness, but then her 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 fortitude and her will to continue on and her strength ultimately. Um, and that was very important for, for, for me, for us, Black Box to show this young black female uh, in this lead role in this supernatural story. So who she is is, is, is very important to me. Speaking of su supernatural stuff, two questions. Number one, uh, had, did you guys watch Lovecraft Country? And question number two, have you guys been reading Naomi and any titles relating to Naomi in DC? Patrick, go. I haven't read uh, Naomi, uh, but yeah, Lovecraft country uh definitely uh i watched the whole thing and i'm still you know that was it was ingenious how they uh actually walk you through that entire story the only piece that got me and i think i me and brian was uh talking about it one time but or it could have been me and you but uh the host roll through the fire Remember uh, when she was holding the book? She went back. Yes, 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 yes. I'm like, will you pick up the pace? What is, what is this? Oh, <laughs> she was bro. walking. You, know? <laughs> you and I were talking about that. She was walking. Yeah. <laughs> run, 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 yeah. run. A couple of things real quick. One of the things that I liked about that series, um, Love Cat Country and also The Watchmen, is oh. that it highlights yes. the Black Wall Street massacre. Yeah. I'm from Tulsa, Oklahoma, okay? Born in Texas, oh. raised in Tulsa, Oklahoma. I grew up but. literally less than five miles away from where Black Wall Street was. I didn't learn about, about Black Wall Street when I was a student in elementary, junior high, or high school. This is something that I learned about as an adult. So I liked how they delved into that issue specifically in Watchmen and a little bit in Lovecraft Country. Right. And what's crazy is in Lovecraft Country, like one of the last two episodes, they mentioned my high school, Booker T. Watt. Yes. When they went back in time, mm -hmm. right? Uh -huh. And they were talking to those two, well, those two black girls were talking about they were getting ready to go to prom or graduation. Right. The high school that they mentioned was the high school that I graduated from, okay? And in fact, I'm going back to Oklahoma next week because it is the 100-year anniversary of the Black Wall Street Massacre, okay? You know, they, they had on uh, the oldest survivor. She was yes. uh, at Congress. Yeah. Uh, what, yes. 107 years old. Yes, 107 yeah. and somebody else, yes. Yeah. That's my hometown. Yeah. And that's it. That's the thing that we we constantly are talking about. To be honest, look, you got Native Americans who have land, and you you have you know uh, basically say, "Yay, yeah, we did we did you wrong," and here's some type of reparation. Well, look at this. Look what you did. Right. And, and, and you will not say, you know what, that was wrong. And uh, there were, there, I, I, I'll go here too. There's a family who, um, after uh, 75 years, 
it was a black family who owned in California at that beach. Yes, yep. yes. And, yep. and they finally gave them their land back. They're about to you yes. millions. Yes. It's like they're not the only one that had land taken from them that right. other that you have been profiting off of, you know. I'm like, there are thousands of us who had land that was taken from us and you have profited over years and years. Look where we would have been. And that goes right back to what we were talking about. That the goes one right if. back to Black Hunt, yeah. 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 Here's what the world would have been like but for. Exactly. Right. They, it, they had beachfront property and a resort on it. And look what you did. You and then they cut them yeah. out. They said you can't buy any more property, so you stifling their growth. <laughs> it's, it's just crazy, man. But but that's the beauty. Yeah. I'm telling you right now, that is the beauty about black cotton. Because wait till you get to issue three, gonna blow your mind. Issue three, you're gonna be like, holy cow, what the heck just happened? And then when you get to the end of this series. You're going to be like, I can't believe they did that. that oh, that, that, end of the series. How many issues is this going to no. be? <laughs> oh, this, this, this is that, uh, six. This, this story, that the end arc, of the the story arc, you mean? The story arc. End of the story right. arc, yeah. The yeah. story arc, okay. Then volume two, me and Brian, we, we already uh, already on that. And I'm telling tell you right now, you, you don't see it coming. You're going to be like, holy cow, these cats are on some other level right here. They they are really unhashing something, you know. This is weird for this. The world ain't ready, but it's too well, late. Tell, tell, tell the audience when does Black Cotton Three drop? June 9th. June 9th. June 9th. That's three days before my birthday, so that's perfect. And three days before your birthday? Three days before my birthday. I'm born oh, we gotta get you a birthday gift then, don't we? Yeah, yeah. I, won't, I will not say no. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm writing it down. I'm writing it down. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Yeah. I mean, it's, yeah, we are, we are definitely excited about uh, the future of Black Cotton, you know, going up to issue six, but, you know, going into a volume two. Um, yeah. And what when does volume, volume two, two start? Uh, February of next year. Okay. Yeah. So volume yeah. one goes into January, then volume two starts. Volume no. one will in September. And you'll get the trade paperback in January, okay. right? And then the then then volume okay. two will begin in, in in February. Now let me ask you this: What type of control do you guys have about variant covers? In other words, for example, if there's an artist out there that you want to draw a variant cover, what type of control do you guys have? It's ours. <laughs> we could do it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you just gotta you just gotta get the artist, right? You just right. gotta yeah. get there. Yep. Let me let me raise my hand now and say I want a variant cover from Kane and White. Oh that's noted. That's who you were uh talking about. Yeah. I, right. that, that'll, be the, that'll be the that'll be the mark edition. Right. <laughs> now my now my birthday is in September. And if that's you're saying that volume six and Brian, you already <laughs> I think Brian said he did uh, number five, right? He did a variant for uh, Devil's Dominion. Devil's, Devil's Dominion, yeah. yeah, for Devil's yeah. Dominion, right? Mm -hmm. So we we that means we we can we on talking relationships, you know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so we know people. We know say people. This, I would like a Canaan White variant for the September issue, number six of number six. A mark specific variant. <laughs> he okay. said a mark specific. I thought he was gonna say a blurred chord. No, 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 no. no. Only one copy. I'm, 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 I'm caring about me. Okay. Only one uh, copy. I don't know if this is Walcott talking that I finished, but look, hey. I want a cane and white right variant for issue number six. Can you make that happen? We we can't just do one, man. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm not talking about just one, but if there's like one of 50, I want number one. Okay. Like, <laughs> you we, want will, we, we will try our best to make that happen. That's, that's what I'll give you. That's all okay. I have. 
and right. then your brother. I, I just, I just asked. I got it written down. I got it written down. You have, you have a little kid in the background with a T-shirt that says "Black Comic Lords" on it. That's all I asked. <laughs> Say that again. A little kid in the background with a T-shirt that says "Black Comic Lords." And then, uh, okay. <laughs> and then somebody in the book has gone to Morehouse and graduated from Morehouse. <laughs> now you're pushing it too oh, far. Wow. Now you're pushing now, it too now, far. Now, Morehouse couldn't be a HBCU, though. Right. Wow. So I'll tell you what school you could know, exist. You know, be a, a university. University. Yeah. yeah I'll tell you what school could exist. <laughs> that's good. That's good. Is that, <laughs> got a, got a lot of propaganda going on. Right here. Not, man. <laughs> trying to plug everything, man. Trying to plug everything. <laughs> All right, oh, man, fellas. So, so look, Black Cotton number three drops June 9th. And your guy's <laughs> job is to make sure you plug your variants. I can only do so much. <laughs> I try to get the people to buy the book which usually consists of a cover A and a cover B. Y'all are in charge of the variants, okay. all right? Fair so I'm enough. putting y'all in charge of the variants. Hey. Plug your variants on the damn page. Fair hey. Hashtag sure Black Comic Pre-orders. I will make sure. All right? Trying to help y'all out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it, it, it definitely appreciate it. Look, real talk, real life, like, I definitely, you know, we both definitely appreciate all the support. Man, uh, don't all, say that, man. It's all, right. all the kinship. It's about kinship, you know. It's about togetherness. It's about unity, you know. Yeah. It's about recouping um, years and years and years and years and years of things that you know might not have been there. You know, we're always in the process of rebuilding ourselves um, from what happened, you know, through ancestry. Uh, so, you know, I I definitely don't take it lightly. I, I appreciate it, bro. But that's that's why we're here, man. We're we're here to support each other. You know, you know this. Is, if we don't do it, who will? Exactly. Well, the answer is, if we don't do it, no one will. So, exactly. yeah. Well, yeah. that's that's why we're here. So, is there um, anything? Okay, so let me let me switch to Brian real quick. Mm -hmm. What else are you? Because you know, again, we follow each other on Twitter. What else are you writing? What else are you doing out there that we need to um, hear of? Yeah, so I am, uh, it's weird to say, I, I, I freelance full time with Mad Cave, if that makes sense. I mean, I'm, I'm technically a freelancer, but uh, I, I work with Mad Cave a lot. Um, so I'm always hand somewhere in the pot with them, fortunately, and, and, and shout out to them. They're great. You know, they have really taken me under their wing last three, four years, and I've learned a lot about the industry through them. Um, I'm still working on things. So I have three more books. What are they? That's going to, that's going to be coming out. What are with, they? With Black Box. I, I, to be honest with you, I, I can't announce the title of them until that's Black fine. Box does. What can you announce that you're working on besides Devil's Dominion? Huh? He says he can't say right now. He says yeah, he yeah. Right now. Like outside of Devil's Dominion, you can't say anything else that you work. I can't say the titles of them until the publisher does. But there's three more books that's between now and 2022, going into 2022 that will be coming out um, with me as a writer from Black Box. Um, well, we just need you to let us know. I definitely what will. you're gonna be doing. I definitely will um, give us advance notice. Don't tell me after the fact that all the variants absolutely. are on eBay and I don't, I can't get them now. Well, get, uh, <laughs> get the name of the ones that are out now, man. Yeah, right. so, well, I mean, of course, yeah. that um, are out now. Devil's Dominion, of course, and the Van Helsing and the Gretel. I have another Xenoscope book um, that I'm working on now. Uh, I'm scripting now that will be out in a couple months, uh, maybe three three months going towards the mid in summer. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, with who's Van Depp. Helsing by? So um, Van Helsing is by Xenoscope and Dark Watchers Gretel is by Xenoscope as well. And the book I'm working on is within that same universe of Xenoscope. Um, what that, issue is Van Helsing? So Van Helsing is a one shot. Oh. Um, so she's a continuous 
character in their universe. Okay. Uh, so she goes back a few years with multiple writers. Um, she actually has a uh, a show on Netflix. Um, yeah. Van Helsing. Uh, they spun her off into her own show. Oh, and um, it's part of Zenoscope. It's it, it's based off of the Zenoscope character. Yes. Okay. Um, it, but so the show isn't the same as the book. Right. But they took the show and they spun her off. They did their own. They did their own version. But um, you have a one shot of Van Helsing from Zenoscope. Yes, I do. It's called Van Helsing Black Annis. Black. Black Annis. I'll show it to you. See, the reason why we do this, folks, is so we can support the Black creatives. So that's that's why we have these conversations. That's why we have the posts that we do, so we can know what is out there, so we as Black comic book fans can support our own. So, yeah. And Pat, do you know Xenoscope? Is that X E N O scope? Yeah. Yep. X E N O scope. Yeah. So is Black Cotton the only comic that you're working on personally? Yeah, that was my first one. Uh, and right now, Hellswing, Black, and us. Okay. I actually had to go snag this <laughs> from my wife. Well, hold my it. wife hold really. It. Hold, hold it still. Black, and us. Okay. My wife really likes these Zenoscope books. Yeah, one of the things I wanted to ask you about, because you, you rattle off a bunch of names of, of different publishers, Black Mask, Zenoscope, Boom, et cetera. Um, how has your experience been working with, with the indie indie public? Because I tell you, me personally, um, like Mark, I grew up more of a, a Marvel guy. And the majority of my collection is made up of Marvel comics. I have, I now get a lot of DC books because I'm a big Batman fan and DC really is just Batman and his little friends at this point, you know? Um, and so I get a lot of, a lot of those sort of related titles. Um, and then in terms of getting back issues and Silver Age stuff, DC's got a lot of black titles that I like. Um, <laughs> but indies really are, are coming strong right now. Like that's... Yeah. That's where all the that's where all the good stories are. Marvel's it's just I'm kind of done with the, the indies are where that you can get some original characters, original stories. You don't have these limitations that you have, and it's really been enjoyable. And I want to know what your experience has been working with these independent labels. You're really starting to come up. Um, I've enjoyed it. Like, I mean, at the end of the day. I'm right with you where my my coming back into comics, like, you know, that cyclical thing, you know, it was indie. Like, I didn't jump back in reading Marvel and DC. I jumped back in reading independent comics, you know, from The Walking Dead on. And right. hands down, The Walking Dead, that, that might be one of my favorite series of all time. It's just phenomenal. Mm -hmm. one, one through 193, what he did with that story. And, you know, in last pandemic, like, I mean, last pandemic, last year during the pandemic, I had the opportunity uh, to go back. I started at, at like issue 98 and I had saved up because I just didn't have the time, like from like 60 issues that were just unread, single issues. And I read from 98 all the way to like 193 oh. during the pandemic of The Walking Dead. And it was phenomenal. Um, some of the best reading I've, I've ever done. And so I think that what we're finding with, uh, well, what, what I've experienced with the ind with independent smaller publisher, independent publishers and smaller publishers um, is a certain, I want to use the word kinship again, but also a certain, uh, a certain partnership where like with Black Box, like the, like the concept for Devil's Dominion was there. He had the, he had the concept and, you know, then I was, you know, allowed to kind of partner up to play, to, to, to factor into how we build the story, how we tell the story. Yeah. And, and so that's kind of why I, I kind of take to, to Devlin because there's, there's, you know, 
while I'm not the IP owner, you know, I'm, I'm part of at least contributing to her creation and who she is and what she is. Um, and I think that with independent publishers and with smaller publishers, you get this ability to create, this, this ability to write and to be a part of the process in a different way. Then I think, I mean, I can't say that because I've never worked for Marvel or DC, but I can imagine that because, you know, that that ground has already been laid out for for years. You know, this ground is more is more fresh. So you have an opportunity to really create and dig in. Uh, and that's been my experience. You know, I've been able to stretch my legs and, you know, chop it up. Um, get some writing chops in on what what they're trying to build and to be a part of what they're building. Could you foresee yourself ever working for the big two someday or are you are you are you good? Um <clears throat> so I think that you know okay so if the big two <laughs> go ahead and say came across <laughs> and say it said hey you know you want to write whatever I mean I think I would do it, um, but I'm kind of a, of the mindset of kind of James Tenney with this. You know, I read an article about his approach and his approach was more so about, you know, <clears throat> for lack of a better word, kind of using that platform to kind of push your own stuff out. Right. So because he's the Batman writer, because he's the Joker writer, because he's the punchline writer, because he's on all these different DC things, um, that only emboldens, you know, the worth and the platform for his Department of Truth, for his, you know, something is killing yeah. the children, right? So he uses one thing to kind of feed into the other. And I think that I would be very much the same way. At the end of the day, you know, I really want to tell these diverse stories, these different stories. And I want to stretch my legs and my arms and everything in my mind as a writer. Um, and I always want to do that. Uh, so I don't think I would ever just like be like, you know what? I'm done with indie comics. I'm just gonna write Batman. That's that's not me. That's not me. Yeah. Okay, right. so let me, let me interject here. Oh, no. here, here, here. Let me let me say this. Here, here's what I envision. And me and Brian talk about this all the time. Uh we want to be the skybound on the indie side, basically. You know, so you got Skybound who is, you know, linked up with uh image. And, you know, doing Robert Kirkman's doing his thing there, props to him. But guess what? We're going to take over the indie side. And uh, y'all going to hear Brian, you know, Hawkins. I I, I told you, you know, uh, February was uh, Hawking wary. You know, he had so many releases. And then wait till next year. Next year is going to be Black Kind Year of the Black Kind 2. I mean, and then we just taking over out there and, and our job is to open the doors. We are opening doors for more people to come right behind and get that light shined on them. Yeah. So that's why we are gonna take over cause it's some phenomenal individuals who all they needed was the door to be pushed open. We kicking that joint open. We, we, we are not sliding it open. They shouldn't have, they should have never gave us an end. <laughs> we kicking it. We kicking that door in. Let me ask you, bro. Wait, 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 wait. What yeah. have you been drinking? Let me let me ask this question, Brian. That's what's up. From the two, no major, doubt, no doubt. From the two, Respect. well, let me say three. From the three major companies: Marvel, DC, and Image. Brian, if you could write any character or a story arc on any character, who would it be? And same same question for Patrick. Brian, go. From the mainstreams. From the three so, mainstreams. Which includes the image, right? Perfect. Because uh, my answer to that would be, I would love to get my hands on The Walking Dead. And I would do really? a, yeah, I would do a, um, a what if, where where Rick 
died and Shane lived. And I would just oh, okay. take the story that way and all the different decisions that would take place because of that. Because right. really that's where the story started. The yes. story started at six when Shane died. Yes. And from that point on, that became The Walking Dead. Yes. So if you did the reverse of that, you have a totally different story. Story. Yeah. Right. So, okay. Patrick, yeah. same question. I would have to get my hands to be honest on uh, most likely either uh, Venom mm. or, uh, or Sabretooth. I would love mm. to bring uh, Sabretooth back, you know, from I don't know where they buried him. I don't know what Kakoa did with Sabretooth, man. Huh? I don't know what Kakoa did with Sabretooth. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and one of those two. Uh, if, if I had had to choose, it'd probably be uh, Venom because uh, the whole aspect of uh, Venom always going against Spider-Man. Then you got Carnage, and I believe that Venom could really uh, be even more deadlier than how they 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 tamed him. It seemed like they tamed him, and I I, I want Venom to go all out and. Guess what? Whoop the crap out of Spider Man, you know, because uh, Spider Man is not uh, on the same level as Venom. I'm surprised mm. neither one of you said Spawn because, quite frankly, Spawn is the longest running yes. black character in yes. comic book history. I'll tell you another one that I would uh, uh, do if we're talking black uh, Shadowhawk. Bring him back, Shadowhawk. Look at that. That's a, yeah. that's a, that's a, that, I, I, I hate the way they killed him. Did uh, he die AIDS or something like that? Exactly. Yeah, I was like, really? You get a black guy AIDS? What's what's up with this garbage? Yeah, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, but Shadowhawk, I still have those too. I got I got Shadowhawk and I love the way they revealed that he was a black man. I don't yeah, know. I got, those. Those, I got those issues. Yeah, the dotted line, you know, and you do the dotted line and it revealed he was a black man. So, you know. That was cool. Do either of you have tribe? tribe? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Tribe? Yeah. Yeah. Larry, Larry yeah. Stroman. Yep. Yeah. There right. are only, I still got it in the bag. Right. Yeah. Tribe? There are only two yeah. issues. But what I discovered within the past year that because I have the black cover with the gold writing on it. Everybody's got the black cover there with the gold writing. There's a white writing. one and there is a purple one. Right. Are y'all reading black? Oh yeah. What's or white? Yeah. The question is, are you reading white? Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. My 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 comic shop didn't get white. Didn't yet. get it. Nobody got it. Because there's only twenty five hundred copies. There's only twenty five hundred copies. That's oh, that's oh. look. This goes back to what I'm always saying on my page, and I'll keep saying this until I'm red in the face. This is why I do black comic pre orders for everybody on the page, because you if you pre ordered it, you're still guaranteed to get it. It's gonna be shipped to me at some point. But right. there's only 2,500 copies of each issue. Wow, that's it. You well, want to talk about some rare comics? Definitely. Paul, we be about black a year or so ago because that's the one where they're the black people in that world are the only right. ones that have, have powers. Or like powers. That. So this is just the continuation of it, but it's kind of like from the white people's perspective. They've that's already started, white. but they've already started the production of that as as far as. It's film, I think, because Brian Edward Hill is actually writing the screenplay for that. I didn't know that. I didn't know that it, uh, they, st they started working on that. That's good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's going to be a controversial story. Yeah. Definitely. Definitely. So earlier you guys were saying right. that um, you were talking to Hollywood about bringing Black Cotton to... Uh, <laughs> would you not, would you not put the brothers on the spot? Can, you, can we not do that, please? <laughs> You're going to blow up their deal, man. I'm, I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to Patrick and Brian. Look, <laughs> As your counsel, you I would encourage I both of y'all to plead now. the fifth. F I, I know you guys are all liquored up now, so I figured I'd readdress that situation. But what were you drinking? I forgot. <laughs> What'd you say you drink? Brian, say it with me. F I F fifth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm going to have to sing it, y'all. <laughs> What's your question, though, so I can sing it properly? <laughs> okay, so let me ask you this, all right? As a hypothetical. Don't let this brother mess up your deal, man. Don't let this brother mess up your deal. 
let's say for the sake of this discussion that Black Cotton is ever brought to live action, mm -hmm. who would you want to helm a movie or series? Mm. Director. I'm going to let Patrick go first because I think I know what he's going to say. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll let you say it. Go ahead, bro. <laughs> Again, I would advise you, don't say anything that's going to mess up your deal. <laughs> you, you think I'm going to say... Uh, uh, Regina. Regina. <laughs> no, 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 I don't. I think I'm going to say someone else. Oh. Who do you think? Huh? Who do you think? Who do I think you're going to say? Yeah. I th I think you're going to say something. Two people. You're either going to say 50 Cent or I Tyler <laughs> Perry. Those are his boys. 50, 50 Cent and Tyler Perry are his boys. <laughs> well, that's interesting because he, he, Tyler, Perry, Perry, Tyler, Tyler Perry has his own studio. Yeah, exactly. And 50 Cent is killing. He's 50 killing. Cent is killing power and Ghost Book 2. Let me tell you. Well, he's a producer, though. Bad he's Rock not a director. Yeah, yeah. so, so he... Here, here, here's what here, here's my uh, thing. If um, we're talking about uh, directing, I would. This is a long, long, long shot. Denzel Washington. I would as what? Love. As a director? Oh yeah, oh yeah. Cause he did uh, Fences. Yes. Uh, he also um, Antoine Fisher. Right. Yes. So so he has it. He has it. You know, and he knows how to make a hit too. Oh uh, shoot! But uh, man, just to just to here's here's what I want. If we ever get to that point, I won't say if because it's coming. When we get to that point, uh, <laughs> I want I want Brian's over there about to fall out of his chair. <laughs> I want them to get me on the phone with Fifty Cent. And Tyler oh Perry God. just for 10 minutes. That's all I need. 10 look, minutes. You need you need 50. You look, you need 50 to do the soundtrack. You need <laughs> Tyler Perry to let you use his studios. Well, and see, you can have Denzel direct it. Hey, that's what I'm telling you. Tyler already has the people we need on yeah. camp. Yeah. We're minority strong. And 70% of you, you his could people. film, you could film it right there in Atlanta. Exactly. Mark will walk. Mark will jump over the fence and try to get on set. <laughs> no, I, listen, I'm going to have a VIP pass. Brian and oh, Patrick, look, look. Yeah, I'm going to have a VIP pass. But the only thing, if you're going to have Paul, Tyler Perry involved, you're going to have to go to an outside company to do the hair and wigs. Okay? So, you know, just throw that out there. <laughs> I don't know what to say to that. <laughs> Let's see. Let's see if we got any more questions. Hey, Paul. Wait, wait, wait. wait. Let me get mine in real quick. Okay, so look, 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 look. I'm going to go with Ryan Coogler. I'm going to go, go Ryan. I'm, I'm go surprised Ryan. nobody said Spike Lee. Okay, yo, hold Ryan on a second. Coogler. That's a very good point. So I'm assuming that you guys have read Black Panther comic books in your lives, correct? Yeah. <laughs> and I'm assuming that you saw the movie. Mm-hmm. Recast T'Challa or retire with Chop T'Challa? Oh my! Are you really? Are you really bringing? Oh my yes, God. I am. What? Uh, Recast oh T'Challa my God. or All right, look. retire T'Challa? Brian, go. Okay. Brian had to put his hat to the back. Let me just lean back. Right. Look. Recast this is half question, half bourbon. I, I don't. <laughs> um. <laughs> look. For right now, I think you have to. You have to go without T'Challa right now. I think that there needs to be a mourning period. I think there needs to be a a a, a, a certain amount of time un untethered. Uh, like there's no like you can't put a number to it. To where the mourning of of Chadwick takes place, like in 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 that respect, because. At the end of the day, what he did for the character of Black Panther, he's synonymous with it. And I and and, and, and it's <laughs> he's synonymous with it. And the heroism and the up the 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 arising of the black superhero, the black hero, which is sad to say in the 21st century, you know, it's synonymous with him. 
because of the state that our country has been in. And all of this has been happening, boom, 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 boom like that. And Black Panther was on such a large scale that I think for him to pass as he did so abruptly and so tragically in that sense, you know, there has to be a time where we just allow the film aspect to grieve and mourn. Maybe sometime in the future, you can come back with something, but I just don't know when that is. It's yeah. just, yeah. yeah. All right, hold that Here, thought. Patrick, here's, go. Here's, here's what I think. I, I, I fully agree with uh, what Brian was saying. What I think uh, the best way that I can visually explain it, what needs to happen in my mind, is uh, how they did the Batman series with, uh, I think they're going to need to do uh, uh, Black Panther 1, 2, and 3 as if it was a series. Honor him. If, if there's some way where you can show him either in flashback, you know, some type. So you're honoring him in that series and then there's a, a stoppage, meaning okay, that was one, two, and three, and then have some space and you come back and it's like, okay, we're going to try something new with a new director and uh, his vision, his or her vision. I think that's the only way they can truly do it where people don't take offense, where it shows that you are respecting the work that he did because he killed it. And uh, you will, you will, you will uh, grow your fan base by doing it that way, by showing respect. And the, the key thing is, uh, think of uh, Heath Ledger. I mean, he killed the Joker to me. You know, there, there's no doubt that he, to me, you know, what he did, they had to put some space in between before coming back with a, another type of Joker. And it couldn't be a Joker that was like him. They had to, it was come from a whole different angle. But there wasn't much space when you think about it because you had really? Batman, what was it? The Dark Knight where Heath Ledger died, but won the Oscar. But then a couple of years later, you had Jared Leto in Suicide Squad. But so... So because okay, we've so had, now we've had two jokers, so, not counting Gotham, but we've had two jokers since Heath Ledger's death. But, but you know why this is different though? This is different and and, and this kind of you know, I mean I'm just gonna speak on it. Like this is different because look, this is a black man <laughs> as Black Panther, Disney movie, Marvel. And here we are, you know, a black man on like worldwide on, on stage and all eyes is on him and all eyes is on that black character. As it is with As all the world, the world is always, and I'm just gonna say, the world is always looking at us. That's what it is. That's what it is. And here you go, you have the Black Panther and you have this incredible man who invited it and, and who was not, who in real life did real life heroism, real life stuff, going to places, no one knew he had cancer, but going to places, talking to kids while he had cancer. What the hell? That is heroism. Yeah, yeah. That is him being- he was, he, was a real, he was a real life hero. Yeah, that's him being king. That's him doing the individual work that we all should do in some capacity. And so you have everyone looking at that and so this takes on a whole nother life. So it, it, it then becomes of like, how do we handle this? And it has to be handled in such a delicate and very specific and very monumental way because it's Disney and Marvel. And they're going to handle it the best way they can. And my bet is that they're going to, they're going to factor it in into the storyline because the storyline is that, hey, hey, T'Challa went missing for a while. Mm -hmm. T'Challa went missing for a while. Namor, the whole thing, and Shuri had to step in. And so, and I think that the character is going to just, they're going to start, they're going to start off with Connor forever with T 
T'Challa missing because it'd be too much pain to actually kill the character in the movies too. Right. And they and, and they don't want to double down on that because there's already enough pain with the real with the real person with the with the real mourning. So you don't want to do that. So you have to give space and you have to use the storyline that's in the comics and say, T'Challa vanished. We don't know what happened to him at X, Y, and Z. And then you bring in his sister who becomes Black Panther and you go through this whole, I mean, I mean, even with that Ta-Nehisi Coates storyline, you know, you have the returning king in that storyline, you know, and, and Wakanda is fractured because he's been gone. And so you kind of can almost run that storyline right there because of this. Let me interject. Patrick, uh-huh. you are a producer of the Black Panther mythos in Disney. Who do you select as the new T'Challa Black Panther? And I'm going to ask you too, Brian. Patrick, go. <laughs> Man. <laughs> uh, that's a tough one. Uh, I would say Right off the top of my head, uh, what's uh what's old boy name from Star Wars? Brian John Boyega. John Boyega. Yeah, I Too have short. to give him uh you know uh the start. He's That'd be short. the first person that I would probably go to. Okay, yeah, I, just, I agree with Mark. He's he's too short. He's like an inch taller than Mark. He's, he's he five nine. He's about five nine. So he's, <laughs> oh, so he's like two inches taller than Mark. That's but, uh, Brian, who would you select? So look, I'm at the cop out on this and say that I. I honestly can't pick, like, because I mean, just just a few minutes ago, I mean, I kind of got emotional about it because, like, I see you took the glasses off and everything. Yeah, yeah, like, I mean, it's it's for me, it's 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 I I I really don't know because I really do feel like you know it. I mean, art imitates life, life imitates art. And there's a reason why we're so into stories. And the reason why we're into stories is because we're holding up that mirror and, and we're always looking at ourselves and seeing ourselves. And so when you see yourself through this character, but then the character who's a person dies from cancer yeah. and fought cancer while filming something fictional, and you think about what he went through with his family. You think about, you know, the, the strength that he put forth with in front of people. And he talked to people who had cancer. For me, you know, the, the, the lines get blurred. And for me, I'm, I'm personally just not at a place to say, yo, I think this guy should, 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 should come in because to me, what he is, he is T'Challa. T'Challa is him, as far as I'm concerned. Like when I read Black Panther, I'm always seeing him too. Gotcha. I can't separate. I, I I can't separate it. And you hear that's, his voice, yeah. Yeah, and and, and 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 that's to the credit of him, right. and to the credit of the power of the character, because we want, as readers and fans, we want to aspire to be more than what we are and he actually was oh yeah. he was to actually live the way he lived in those 43 years he was more than what we we sometimes dream to be and we have to find ways to do that in our real life to 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 be more than what we are in the moment that we are so i do hope one day that they get to a place where they find the right actor um, to continue the stories of T'Challa and Black Panther um, because it's a phenomenal character. It's just that I'm I'm personally just too I'm just too in the moment with it. Gotcha. I'm, I'm I, think I, 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 I think it's gonna be um, somebody fresh and new. And when I say fresh and new, I think it's gonna have to be somebody who was also touched by him, not necessarily you know. Uh, like they met him, but he touched them so that they also want to take that character to the next level, just like he did. And just did. thinking back in his life, I mean, you had Denzel Washington who, you know, touched him while he was in college, you know, paid for his done, uh, you know, uh, college. 
study abroad or something like that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, so you have that, but then look at what he did also for the female uh, supporting uh, uh, actor on his uh, movie, 21 Bridges, where he fought and, and basically took a pay cut so that she could get also yeah, equal right. pay, yeah. you know, yeah. dessert, the, the man was just something else. Uh, let, me, let me say this, as you know, I'm older than both of you guys. And I've been reading Black Panther for an extremely long time, not as long as Paul, but you know, I have been a fan of Black Panther for quite some time. And for me, the character of Black Panther is bigger than any one person, be they a writer, artist, or even an actor. Chadwick Boseman was a phenomenal once in a lifetime type actor. Mm -hmm. Whoever portrays the role next needs to be on that level as far as acting talent. Agreed. I, you know, let me say this Chadwick died in August. And then, you know, a week, a couple of days after he died, you know, we need to retire the character. He never needs to be seen on screen again. I took the exact that. opposite position because it is recognized that T'Challa is the first black superhero in comic books, okay? So as a comic book fan, as a black comic book fan, in my mind, it's like, you can't retire this character just because one person died. Right. And so I've come up with a list of individuals who I feel would do the character justice and has the physical attributes as far as looks are concerned to play the role and the talent to match or exceed Ooh. what Chadwick Boseman did. And Ooh. so for me, I have a list of three. I have three people. I bet you I know one of them, but I'm not going to say it until you're done. Go. Okay. Number one, my number one choice is Damson Idris from Snowfall. <laughs> okay. Damson Idris is at this point 29 years old, maybe 30. He is at least six foot one, six foot two, tall, dark complexion. But he's only like 130 pounds wet. So obviously, he's gonna have to, he has, obviously, he, he has, has to, to get on that Marvel workout plan with some protein shakes. <laughs> okay. Number two is Sope Dirisu. Have you guys seen the series? Gangs of London. Mm -mm. Yeah. Brian, yeah. I know you got a pad and pen right there. Patrick, get you one. Write down Gangs of London. Me, Paul, and one of our other boys watched that over quarantine. Gangs of London is a series that was made by the dude who uh, created the Raid movies. If you've seen the Raid movies and you see how good those were, that's how good the series was. Particularly but, episode one. Phenomenal when you, see, when you see dude go into a bar, yes. just sit down and just relax because it's going to be a ride. Let me tell you something. I, I, I mean, okay, okay. Sophie Dirisu is, and he might be British, but from African heritage, like Kenyan or, or, or Nigerian, Nigerian or something like that. He has the physical attributes that T'Challa would need, and he is a good actor. Okay. He specifically, he specifically looks like how T'Challa is portrayed right. by artist Daniel Acuna in the current um, Black Panther coach run. Yes, that is true. That is true. He looks <laughs> just like that. He, he, he does. Um, number three is Stephen James, who played with Chadwick Boseman in 21 Bridges. He also played in the movie Race, where he portrayed Jesse Owens, which follows along the lines of what Chadwick Boseman did when he played James Brown and Jackie Robinson. So Stephen James is my third choice. So I am of the recast T'Challa camp. This is the first Black superhero. I understand Brian's position as far as the raw emotions of Chadwick's death and not wanted to quote unquote dishonor him, but that character is too important to put on the scrap heap for the next five, 10, 15 years, you know? So for me, episode two or, or Black Panther two, I have no problems with it being Shuri centric because that coincides with the comic book because yeah. there was a point in time when 
T'Challa was injured and Shuri had to take over. Paul and I have had this discussion numerous times. And what I have said was on the screen, what should happen is we see T'Challa in his full regalia injured and set aside, letting Shuri take over, trying to A, seek revenge, B, rule Wakanda while T'Challa recuperates. And then at the end of the movie or as an after credit scene, T'Challa recuperates and it is the new actor playing that role. But I don't think personally that the character should be retired forever and ever or whatever, you know, because yeah. young black boys need to see that role model of T'Challa outside of Anthony Mackie as Captain America or Don Cheadle as um, War Machine, you know? T'Challa was something special, and I think that he needs to well, be. Well, we'll we'll, back. we'll see we'll see what happens. I mean, um, they they've obviously written a new script. Uh, Chadwick's not going to be in it. They've already said that. Um, it's highly likely they're going to do something with Shuri. They said Shuri's going to have a more prominent role, and they'll bring him back sometime in the future, and it'll give yeah. people a chance to get to, to to move the story forward. And I think another cool thing is Disney's announced this this World of Wakanda series, which gives them an opportunity to explore other parts of Wakanda outside of the Black Panther. And I think it'll allow people to adjust and, you know. I'm with you. And uh, I mean, listening to your, your, your idea, your reasoning, I mean, I can't knock it. And, and I'm somewhat in agreement with it because like I definitely don't think they should retire the character. Right. I think that there's a, there's an emotional quotient that uh, with with uh, with a undetermined time where at least this next sequel, you know, which will span at least two years, and then you, you know, you wouldn't have another movie for another two years. So that's like four, like that's between four to six years, really. Right. Um, is I, yeah, in my mind, I feel like that is probably the amount of time that they will use because there's no way, I mean, financially speaking, there's no way that Disney going, is going to not bring back a male Black Panther. That's going to happen financially. Yeah. But I there's agree too many toys with, and lunchboxes to not. Absolutely. <laughs> I agree with your sentiment that, um, that, uh, that he is a just way too much of an important character, T'Challa, right. character, um, to never have again. And that's just impossible. Um, and to be honest with you, I think that, you know, in our own mortality, we understand, and I'm pretty sure Chadwick would, and any other person who uh, knows their own mortality is that life goes on and that generations still have to grow and prosper. And right. characters are very important to that. Um, and I'm, I'm totally in agreement with that. Um, yeah, I mean. I mean, it's like James Bond. Right, right, exactly. It is, it, it, it is. I think that this character though is because, I mean, again, you know, I'm just gonna say like, it's something about, <laughs> it's something about us. Yeah. It's something about, especially this time about us about female black leads, male black leads, these characters that has the ability, minorities in general, people of color in general, people who have been disenfranchised. All like these stories are important because these are actually the histories that was never told. That's what we're looking at. We're looking at using fiction to bring about histories that have been swept under the rug because victors have done so. And so that's what we're feeling. We're feeling the evolution of truth, truth through fiction that is shedding light on our own reality. And that's why it, it has to keep moving forward. And that's, you know, I mean, now to come full circle, that's what black cotton is about. Exactly. You know? <laughs> it's about that exact notion. Um, and it's not about, you know, me and Patrick 
patting ourselves on the back. This is, 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 it's, we love comics. We love storytelling. But this is also work. This is also the work of art. And this is what Shakespeare, uh, what James Baldwin, what Du Bois, what all those people were writing and doing in their art form. That's what this is. It's about engagement, edification, edutainment. It's about all that stuff that's taking place. Yeah, and, 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 and we're all in the center of it. What you guys are doing with your group and your page is the same thing. We're all doing it, and it's all going to be universal willing to the benefit and the betterment of this of, of, of this reality that we're in. Yeah, that's the hope. Well, look, we love Black Cotton. We can't wait to see issue number three and the rest of them. Um, hopefully, you guys will give Kane and White a call so we can get a variant cover of number six. I need that. I need that Black Cotton, uh, Black Comic Lords edition. <laughs> hey, I, I was gonna say let's 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 talk about that. Let's you talk got, about it. How, how many people uh, across the span y'all got? So on, on, on the Black Comic Lords, that's, that's specifically just comics. So it's a smaller group. It's only like 200 people. But for Black Superheroes Forever, which is a Black Comic Lords affiliate, that's like over 4,100. Yeah. So, so we can definitely uh, talk about, you know, doing an exclusive. You know? All right. All right. And, and that way. Y'all heard, it here, y'all heard it here first. That'd be really cool. It really Is there anything cool. that you guys want to plug that we have not discussed at all? Because uh, we've been. Wanna, on if you want to give a shout out, if you want to give a shout out to your to to your fam, your baby mama. <laughs> oh, definitely. <laughs> mama, no yeah, baby, baby mama. mama. Said, no. <laughs> hey, definitely. Here's what I'll say. Uh, uh one. I know of anyway. You know, uh, <laughs> shout out to my 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 beautiful wife, uh, Tara. You know, she she's resting upstairs, you know, knocked out. Uh, but also, hey, uh, I'm doing three new songs. I, I put a gospel CD out. Uh, okay, that's what's up. In 2020. Uh, you on Spotify or any of those platforms? Yeah, I'm on all that. All that. Yeah. Ahead, you know, plug it out, man. Tell us where we can find it. Yeah, yeah. I'm on uh, Spotify, you know, iTunes. I'm on all, all the dig- digital uh, media sites. If you just Google my name, Patrick Foreman, and put he's able behind it, it'll pop up. You'll see the award that I won, you know, with the song uh, that was with uh, David Scott. Uh, phenomenal. I'm going back in the lab next week working on a new song. So I'm going to uh, put out three songs this year. But we also, this is, uh, I guess y'all getting the first tip big exclusive. Uh, we also probably going to put out a Black Cotton, you know, uh, uh, soundtrack uh, around Christmas what? time. Nice. All yeah. right. All right. That should be a jazz CD. That should be <laughs> jazz <CD. laughs> Hey, it's, it's going to have a mixture of everything. Gotcha. You know? So, uh, so, so we, we got big things in the work for Black Cotton. I told you, they, they, they should have never unlocked the door because we kicked that mug in. You know, uh, so we got so it's gonna be a black cotton comic book with a digital download soundtrack in it, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Why not? Nice, Why not Brian. Anything you want to plug that we haven't discussed? No, you guys have really covered the bases. Um, you know, we're just looking forward to uh, Black Cotton Three and it coming out monthly. Um, I'm excited about it. Patrick's excited about it. Um, you know, to round out this six issue story arc um, and really expanding, you know, the BCU, you know, the Black Cotton Universe and what it is and everything that it entails. Um, and that's what the, the rest of the arc is about. And then going into into volume two is just an expansion of this reality that we're in. So nice all right all Guys, right look we appreciate you, you having much. me we appreciate yeah. your time for real hey That's man awesome. this has been great man yo anytime y'all want to chat it up anytime. have this cipher yo let's let's do all it right. man. Well, you said this, big things are happening in issue three so we'll bring you back after oh, we'll talk how about, about a issue. monthly thing you don't want to talk issue. about issue a monthly three. thing i am down. I was hoping right. you would say that. I would love to chat it up with you guys monthly on this it, it's so cool just hanging out and not just talking about black cotton but just just kicking it, man. You know, um, you know, 
we live in a virtual world right now anyway. Right. So like this is like relationship. Yeah. Um so so I'm 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 totally down. So hey, we can, right. how about we do it how about we do it monthly after like the week after the issue drops, not that same week, but the week after the issue drops, we start just talking about it. We just do hey, that till that's what's up. Hey, that's yeah. what's up. Hey, definitely. Damn. Hey, damn. Lock hey us fellas, in. fellas. I bring my bourbon. Fellas. Black cotton. Black cotton. <laughs> Black cotton. <laughs> Black cotton, Black cotton to all your fans too. I appreciate y'all. Yeah. For everybody who tuned in and watched us, thank you very much. Enjoy your weekend. Have a good time. Patrick Foreman, thank you. Brian Hawkins, thank you guys. Appreciate it. Paul, good job as always. You guys take hey. it easy. Bless appreciate up, it. fellas. All right, Mark, Paul. Bless up. All right now.